We do have a quorum if okay. you'd like to get started. Okay, so it's 603. And I like to call the meeting to order. Um, I have been asked to read the following statement. Uh, recently, regional and local elected and appointed bodies have been subjected to disruptive, racist, verbal attacks by anonymous callers during virtual public comments. The City of Mountain is fully committed to racial, religious, and cultural equity and justice as we strive to create a welcome, safe, and inclusive, inclusive community for all. This advisory body welcomes respectful and non-threatening public comments regarding matters over which the advisory body has jurisdiction. Comments deemed otherwise pursuant to the city, to the council code of conduct, conduct and the government code may be grounds for immediate return and comment. Um, roll call. Um, Community members. Uh, Cliff Bryant. Here. Josie Cup. Here. Lacey Rathbun. Here. Uh, Tutu Thompson is absent. Bob Whitbread is absent. Uh, Regina Sakels is absent. And Susan Bernhardt is present. And so we can move to approve the minutes. Anybody want to motion? I'll make a motion to approve them. Second. 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 Okay. Second. Staff here. Um, oral communications from the public. Yeah, no, that's, that's right. Uh, so, well, you have a member of the public, but you need to vote on it. So before you vote, would you like to call and see if have that want to discuss minutes. Uh, okay. That's that's good. So 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 does anybody in the public want to comment does, on the does minutes? anybody yeah okay uh, we do have a member online but I'm not seeing any hands raised mm -hmm. and the person is a comment so I'll call Okay, so call for the vote. Oh, then call for the vote. Yeah, yeah you got it. You got it. Okay, got it. Okay, got got it. it. We, got it. we got the motion, Cliff, and second by Lacey. Yes, and now we're both. Okay. So I say all in favor. Okay. <laughs> all those in favor? Okay. Okay. You're gonna have... <laughs> all right. Good. Um, then for oral communications from right. anyone wishing to make uh, a comment on an item that is not on the agenda may do so now. Uh, if you're online, you can raise your hand or hit star six. If you have a public comment on a non-agenda item. Hands raised. In the audience. So then, as moving on to our upcoming agenda topics, we wanted to ask if everybody is in favor of moving item number seven point two. Seven point two. Oh yeah, seven point two, uh, and move this as. The first item. Yeah. All favor. Yeah. All, All favor. <laughs> All right. So we'll have instead of um, six point one, which comes right after, we'll have seven point two presentation by Arts Mountain. Okay, so I, I came here a few months ago, John. You were on vacation. Was it December or November? November. Um, and I started an organization just so you guys remember what it was Arts Mountain View. 
I, uh, this is right across from where I get my hair cut in Los Altos and I walked out and saw this <coughs> girl and it brought joy to my heart. It just was one of these things that had been a beige wall. And then the next thing I thought is Mountain View is younger and hipper. Why do they have this in Los Altos and we don't have it in Mountain View? And so I started Arts Mountain View. Completely stole the business plan, plan from Arts Los Altos, who has, is working on their 13th mural in the last four years. So that's the history of I'm retired and I was looking for my next thing. And this is it. So that's kind of my creation story of where I came up with this. So I completely stole their business plan, which is uh, it's two women. They used to be on the Arts Council in Los Altos when they got off the Arts Council in Los Altos, they were like, there's so much more art we want to do. So what they do is private fundraising for murals in public spaces on private buildings. So that's my goal, is to not do what you guys are doing, but be adjacent to you. You're doing public funds for public works, and I want to do private funds for private works in public spaces. So next one. So this is just an example. We have, um, like, I'm sure you've seen this building on Castro Street. And um, a muralist said, just, you know, I said, give me something that would be pretty. And it's just, it's just so nice to have murals in public spaces. So that's just an inspiration. The next one. So then um, I, thank you, Jesse, uh, got me with Mark over at, um, the uh, Oddfellows. Oddfellows. And they had put together this mural about from what they believe before COVID, but then they never got funds together to get it going. So I have now been approved. I've met with Oddfellows. I've gone to their meeting. I've gotten approved by their organization to, to facilitate the mural. I'm cur currently working with them because they don't want to just, no one knows where the artwork is for this. So they want to kind of start over and figure out what art they want. So they're currently, I'm, I put together a survey that they are currently filling out to come up with an idea of what they want. And then we will choose an artist and go through the process. That said, I have no money. So it's not like we're behind, you know, we're, we're in a race um, to get this I, it's not like I have a pot of money sitting here and can't wait till they give me art so that I can get it going. I'm hoping to get some projects going and I'm raising money. So I have reached out to Silicon Valley Foundation and put them in because Silicon Valley Foundation, they have billions, literally, and um, they for the arts, they will go to, what is it they call groups that are, um, not well represented or have issues to provide art. I don't know, I can't think of the exact word they use right now, but underrepresented groups or groups that are marginalized in our society. So this, um, if you didn't know, Odd Fellows has turned into an LGBTQ plus organization. So that's a marginalized group. So I have put together funding to be able to do this for them through Silicon Valley Foundation. So hopefully I'll get that grant. If not, I'm putting grants in all over the place to see if I can get money for this. So next, I'm also working, I don't know if anyone knows about Art Changes Us. It's a really cool organization out of the Methodist Church on Mercy Street. And they have this wall. This wall is actually on Blossom Lane, which faces here. So if you stand out in front of here and you look toward on Mercy Street, you will see about this much of the building. So um, my goal initially is to do murals on Castro and Castro adjacent buildings. Um, so the downtown area. And they have funding. So I really like working with funding organizations that have funding. These are inspirational. When I came to them, they were like, this is the kind of inspiration they were looking at to create murals here. We're thinking about something that comes here and then comes out so you can see it and then goes up. The second story, you see that door is how you get into um, our Changes Us facility. 
So kind of bringing it up to our changes us. So they want some kind of, you know, we haven't yet gotten to exactly what they want, but um, if you don't know, the Methodist Church of Mountain View and the Methodist Church of Los Altos combined, and the Methodist Church of Los Altos is very wealthy, and the, they, ha, they are using this facility here for their out community <laughs> outreach. So, yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I've, I've actually, I didn't know this wall was something you were considering. Yeah. And I've been there before. Yeah. And I've... Uh, up close, if you feel it, if you touch it, <clears throat> the texture is not very good for um, artists who paint like, with a paintbrush or a roller or something. Yeah. So I just recommend you get someone who can work with spray paint. Because it's really deep, like crevices and nicks and crannies in there. We're but looking need... at, they really liked the guys <clears throat> over that did the, well, the first one I showed you, mm -hmm. the one over at Los Altos, which is street art. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. loved what yeah, he did with street art. So that's our highest, you know, that's kind of like what we're looking at now. Because they also want to do something where they can involve the kids. Because it's our changes us is a program. Um, they get the kids. They're recommended by the local mm -hmm. high schools, and it's low income kids to provide them with an arts program um, that they don't. There, if there's no cost for the kids, so it's a really positive environment for the kids. So I have three projects with them. So this is project one. Um, if we go to the next one, this is project two. If you go back one, if you were to walk down the street right here, this is the entr entrance, how you get in. So this is a 1950s building. And after trying to figure out what this was, these gates, what I think it was is they were trying to do medieval church gates, mid-century modern back in 1960 when they built this. But right now it just kind of looks jail-like. So their goal, they wanted to make it a happy place as opposed to what it currently looks like. And they have a little bit of funding. And so this is just the inspiration. What they were talking about is having some kind of tree of life. I mean, I just went on just so that I wasn't up here and there wasn't anything for visual inspiration. I just went on uh, AI and said, give me two medieval gates with a tree growing between them. It's much easier that it took me two hours to get that, but um, it was painful. But I'm not an artist, so if I was an artist, it would have taken me, what, 10 minutes to draw a little that. So we have all kinds of other conversations of what kind of tree and how it's going to look and all kinds of stuff like that. But that's the general idea. So that's project number two. This one probably is going to get going sooner than later, the fastest going one. Um, and we want to include the kids. Um, and then um, the next one, this is uh, Jose from Ava's has no idea we're talking about this. Just so that you know, this is just inspiration that I'm talking with Katie over at Art Changes Us. And the kids in the program created these um, posters and not that we're using these posters. I just took the posters because they were saying what they wanted to do is something on Castro Street that they would pay for that the kids had created. So I just took something from their website they already created and put those in there. But Ava's, this is really boring right here. So what we thought would be really cool is have the kids do some kind of art, work with a commercial artist who can help us with the sizing of it and work with the kids to bring it up so they can create the art, but then have a professional artist bring it up to the next levels and do something that maybe we have like, like we have a triptych, can we have a four tick? I don't know, because uh, there's four panels. Maybe it's something like, that the first one is talking about our history because we were the largest producer in Santa Clara County was the largest producer of um, had our orchards in California in the 1920s. So going back to like maybe a picture of orchards that bring our history and then we bring it to the table. So maybe four of how you get from something that has a food theme because it's a market, but 
I'm not an artist. I'm just coming up with some ideas with all of you. I want to work with artists that help the kids. And then we also want to bring Juan in if he agrees to this and his landlord agrees to this to bring them in. And we plan on doing vinyl wrap, yeah. like what they people do to cars and buses, because that's temporary. And it's much easier sell um, to landlords to say it's it's peel, you know, they can just peel it off if they don't want it anymore. But um, I think it's a great way to start in downtown Mountain View with something. It's not going to be signage. It's going to be a mural and bringing the kids art and making sure that it's professional. So that's number three for our Changes Us. And all the Art Changes Us stuff is funded. So I've seen this hanging at Red Rock before. There's um, posters that the kids made. And yeah. They were 100% made by the high school students, right, from Art Changes Us. That were right. That, well, it was 100% made by them, but you can see... The letter, all of that, they work with a professional graphic artist to help them. With the lettering? Well, with the, you know, like you can see the layout is very professional looking. So they had a professional designer work with them to help them. But yes, the artwork, some of it is painting, some of it is photography. They were working with their art mm -hmm. teacher professionals. It's also nice with the final change it. Yes. You do it for two years and then change it. To exactly, to exactly, yeah. exactly. So the goal is not to make it signage, to make it something that is muralist, a mural and art. And I'm open to any, you know, if you want to catch me or send an email to me, I'm, we're open to ideas. If you have ideas on this, um, and working with, uh, we have to work with, we like to work with a graphic artist who can help us because the sizing and making, you know, mm -hmm. the artist, the kids will come up with the art, but a graphic artist can then make it look that next level that we're going to need to have or we want to have. So that's my fourth project. So last time I came here, I said, I want to do this, but I had not one project, zero projects. And now I have four projects, three of which are funded. So I'm very happy by that. So then the next thing I'm working on is these uh, polyforms. So I really like Los Altos did bears, San Francisco did hearts, um, Cupertino did uh, rabbits. We haven't yet chosen what we want to do. I am working with the Chamber of Commerce on coming up with a survey. We have about a half a dozen different shapes that people have said, um, which I'll show you in a minute, and figuring out what shape we want to do and do one of these, pro a project like this down Castro Street. So um, Kirsten is helping me because um, we have to get permits. We don't have permits for short-term <laughs> art projects, and this would be a short-term art project, having him located down Castro Street. This is hopefully a 2025 project. It's about a year from the time I start until we can get the forms in Mountain View. Because uh, you have to, there's a whole bunch of steps. Um, so this is what we're looking at doing. This is a fundraiser. So it, does, it meets two of my goals. One is I need to raise money because I don't know if Silicon Valley Foundation or any of these other foundations will give me money. So if they don't give me money, then I need to raise it. And even if they don't, even if they do give me money, I can raise more money. More money means more murals. Um, and uh, also my goal is to bring art to Mountain View. So I, yeah. Have, have you thought about going out to neighborhoods? We were approached by uh, folks like in the Quest neighborhood who wanted to have some um, artwork done in their neighborhood to enliven it. They're looking at the utility boxes and yes. the so the, the, yes. the organizations had the will, and I don't know if something like this could be really portable into a neighborhood somewhere. Yeah, uh, They may be interested in raising funds, participating. They, 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 they were looking for an avenue to bring the neighborhood together and express. I think that's great to have them because what we're going, there's a couple, there's a bunch of different pieces to this. One, One. is getting sponsors who will sponsor these so it pays for it. The yeah. other is getting artists who will create these and then whatever we sell them for, the artist gets 25%. That's the same model they used in Cupertino and Los Altos. 
Um, and yeah, I think that's great. The other thing that I have in my business plan for Arts Mountain View, I'd like to get a dozen murals on Castro Street. And once I hit a dozen, not abandon Castro Street, but what my goal is, is to move out to each of our communities. Like I live in Jamelo. I'd love to do a big mural in Jamelo, you know, so each of the communities have a mural that says Jamelo on it and talks about that community. So yeah, I like the idea of reaching out to each of them and asking them if they want to create something, you know, about their community. Right, right. What's the price range for one of these? Like sculptures. Um, I have a, if anyone wants, I have a business plan. So if anyone wants it, if you send me a text or an email, I'd be more than happy to share it. But um, it's about just rough cost. It's about $2,500 to have a form created because mm -hmm. each one, so we're looking at three sizes, three feet, um, five feet and seven feet. Mm -hmm. So it's about, for all of them, it's not a big difference in cost. <clears throat> It's about 2500 to have the form created. And then for the three foot, I think it's like $1,500 to have um, that produced. And it's about 2500 to have the five foot and about 3500 to have the seven foot. The seven foot would be like this. It's not seven foot tall. This is like three foot high and four foot long. So if the goal, I guess, is to raise money for murals, then I would say, why not fundraise directly for murals instead of, you know, doing we're this? Because just not had, it's very so. hard to get the companies yeah. to fundraise for murals, as opposed to sponsor something like this. Mm -hmm. um, Los Altos made $150,000 profit. Not gross, net. Uh, Cupertino was about 50000 net from doing this project. So I think it kind of meets a lot of need, a lot of needs. So it's two different projects out there. Um, and uh, I am working with Chamber of Commerce, so it's just not me on my own. What I really need Chamber of Commerce is they have all, like when I'm doing sponsorship, I don't have names of thousands of companies, they do. So it's a great partnership. I'm willing to do the, you know, all the foot on the ground work. <laughs> And they're thrilled not to be doing that. Yeah. I also kind of see this as adding some risk to the fundraising process, though, because you could, you know, spend two thousand dollars on this blank sculptural form, and then it sells for less than that. Or it well, but sell that's little. the benefit of the sponsorship. Is like for the small ones, it's a twenty five hundred dollars sponsor, and I only order mm -hmm. based on how many I get. So if I have ten people or twenty people that sponsor want to sponsor a three foot tall for twenty five hundred dollars. My cost is about fifteen hundred, so I am guaranteed to make a thousand dollars off of them. So it might be not be a lot of money, but it might be enough for a mural. But let's say if I get, only get ten or fifteen, so wait, how, how are you guaranteed to make money off this if, if no one bids on it? If one of them doesn't, so because I'm only purchasing through sponsorships. So we're going out to companies and they have to sponsor a mural. So and are the sponsors paying sponsor a, more than more. the total cost of the sculpture? Is yes. that the idea? So okay. it co let's say it cost me $1,500. I can't remember all the numbers off the top of my head. I do have a um, business plan, which is all, the costs are all out there. But it's about $1,500 for the small one. And I'm charging $2,500 to the um, sponsors to be able to sponsor one. So I'm guaranteed to cover cost and guaranteed to get some money at the other end. And then, they, so they, if they pay $2,500 for sponsorship, they then become sponsors. Um, they have to pay another $2,500 and they own it. So, or they can choose when I, um, this is what Tino did. They said about a third of the companies that sponsored also purchased. And they pretty much were able to sell the rest of them. So I'm only going to purchase what I have sponsors for. So if I get 10 sponsors and that's it, there's only going to be 10. And, and these can be anywhere within the city as long as you get a sponsor. So it's not well, you know, on, anywhere the city allows me to have them, though, I kind of want to focus just on Castro Street. Okay. So we can do, there's all kinds of stuff we can do, like find this games for kids. There's all kinds of stuff we could think about doing when we have them on Castro Street. You know, treasure hunt for these. And it, 
brings art and liveliness to downtown Castro Street. It makes people walk up and down the street so they can see them all. So if you have other ideas, I haven't spoken to the downtown committee. They might have other ideas about downtown and bringing people down and making it lively. I'm open to that. So the next one. So these are just some of the forms that we're talking about. Um, so we're going to be putting together, I've put together, I have it to someone to make sure I didn't make any mistakes on it, um, a uh, survey that um, Chamber of Commerce is going to send out to their customers to say, which do you, I guess they're not customers, um, clients, whatever, um, which form do you like so that we can get an idea of, you know, I personally like coyote, but some people might hate coyotes. So I don't know what's positive and what's negative. I know the bears were very positive for Los Altos, but I feel kind of can't really do the same thing Los Altos did. So we need to find out what is popular, what people like, what forms, and then create something. And we want kind of want to have something that ties in with our area. So, and then the last one are my open issues that I'm working for right now. Um, so for the fiberglass, figures, we need to get a city permit for temporary art. Um, and then we also need to work with the city on how we are going to secure them so that don't run off with them. Are these like permits that exist? Mm -hmm. Right now it would be an encroachment permit. Um, that's the avenue to put something on top of the property. Yeah, to be mounted. So part of the problem is it goes through city works and they're used to working with like the problem that Susie had when it came to an artist, they're used to working with construction guys. So they want, mm -hmm. and which doesn't necessarily apply to smaller things like this. So we need to figure out what the other cities, so that we can compare them and hopefully get a right size cost and whatever permit. And then, um, Odd Fellows is concerned, so I'm also working with Kirsten. Um, they have a sidewalk, and same thing with Blossom Street. We have um, a road right next to the mural, and even though we now have a permit for murals, we want to make sure what is covered in that permit, and is there an issue closing a public road to be able to reach? So the big issue with um, especially with um, Odd Fellows, is they have a parking spot. So they have sidewalk and then parking spot. And Odd Fellows' concern is if someone's painting and they get paint on someone's car that's parked there, that person will sue them. So they want to block the spot. And does the permit cover that? And if it doesn't, what's the avenue? So just to make sure that they don't want, and I'm sure when we get to it with Odd Fellows on that wall, that we're going to have to close Blossom Street, which is a public road, what's the issue with that? It'll probably be a weekend. And the only one that would use it is people going to their parking lot. There's another way to get to their parking lot. But just, we want to upfront take care of any of those issues. So that's it. Great. Thanks, Anita. Uh, questions for Anita yeah. before we jump into discussion? Mm -hmm. Questions, I have, I have just a, questions. This is like when you wrote fiberglass, is that what that, that that's made out of, that material? Um, some of the companies do poly, which is plastic, and other companies do fiberglass. Like figures, fiberglass? Yeah, fiberglass. What, have you guys seen, I can't remember where it was, it was all those cows? Yeah. Well, where was that? Well, the, the, yeah, the there's cows. a bunch of them all over the place. I know Switzerland, we had this conversation, they did cows. So Chicago cool. is known for doing the cows. Paris had it. Yeah. Had it. Yeah. Had it. Uh, I mean, the, the, yeah. cow, why, the cows are everywhere. Yeah. The, but we really don't have cows in Mountain no. View. I kind of want to have something. Here. The birds are good because we, I'm birds. thinking what's unique, Baylands. Yeah. We're on the... Yeah. Um, Pacific, uh, and we're uh, we're in a mic. When I was living in Ecuador, these people were like, oh, "You live in Mountain View? Do you understand that's one of the like most famous migratory paths in the world?" And I had no idea. That's why we kind of had the, so the bird thing. Yeah, was, the, that's why we had the blue heron. Yeah, because we have blue herons. That is a really so that, cool. That's what's up to me in terms of being unique. Mountain. And 
I work with a friend of mine who's an artist and there's certain shapes she doesn't like. She doesn't like the owl. She said it looks like poop. I love poop. Far away where a blue heron has a really heron super cool. Um, thing. The, the um, <laughs> owls on Bay Shore. Yeah. Are um, famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so, so it's there. Yeah, so we have the owl, but she doesn't like it as and I'm not an artist, so I'm just like repeating what she tells me. She she likes blue herons better than owls. But I also, we also Rancho and the um, farm at Rancho is part of the city of Mountain View. So we also have ties to Rancho. So that's why I'm saying. Deer is what we deer. have in Rancho. <laughs> Coyote, deer. Yeah. So. There's a foundation that Mike Kaspersack has. What's well, the foundation? Thing. I don't know what the name of it is. He's involved in so many things. So. <laughs> so, um, but he was, um, you might try to contact Mike. Yeah. Mike Kaspersack. He was the one that came up with the owl idea. Right. So if you already contacted him, that's good because he has his fingers in a lot of very, sticks. Very, very, very various foundations. Yeah, I figure once we figure out what animal, I want to reach out to any local groups that have that animal to see if they want to be part of this. Well, I was going with Mike for funding. Oh, for funding. Oh. Because he, he heads a foundation that does. Oh, cool. So he, might, he, he lives might in my neighborhood. Contact. You, you might contact. Yeah, I did reach out to him, and he never got back to me. Choosing an animal too. If someone's going to paint on it, or if you're going to have various animals painting, that's also something that's going to have to be considered. Like how appropriate is that space? Yeah, paint and have diversity in the artwork. Yeah. So how can we, as a committee, help you? Oh well, um, I just had what I needed help with. I also, so that you guys are aware of what I'm doing so that we can be collaborating together. So, you know, communication, uh, I'm looking for funding. So anything that you guys can do with the city that can help with funding for, you know, downtown, um, neighborhood, um, art, because I'm willing to do all the project management and all the work. So... <laughs> So, okay, John. so John, with the with the uh, yeah. with various projects for for the downtown, is the things that I'm thinking about the facade grant specifically. And apply to this. Uh, just in general, <laughs> is, is that a, is that like a a type of? Yeah. This is a CIP project. It's definitely not a CIP project. Um, you know, I right now the direction from council for those funds was to treat it as a facade that was really meant to look to improve a buildings so you can use it for painting mm -hmm. so that is that is an aspect of the facade mm -hmm. um or like getting your door ada compliant mm -hmm. or fixing a broke couple broken windows or an awning yeah. but it was not that's the genesis of what the facade program is about, but it does allow for painting. So um, that could be a, a, could be there a pathway for. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just throw out some other uh, observations. So animals are interesting to do, and uh, the neighbor to the south did sharks representing San Jose Sharks. Mm -hmm. um, where I grew up, uh, very well known for Charles Schultz and they did the cast of Peanuts. So, and they did this over a couple different years. They had Snoopy, Woodstock. Spike. Uh, I don't remember Spike, <laughs> uh, Charlie Brown. And they did hundreds of these and they created a whole map and you could literally spend a whole day going around all of Sonoma County finding these things. So you can kind of dream big or dream so more a little more. Um, they're, they're the same size, they're heavy. So depending on the type of piece, while the material might be lighter in nature, they were actually heavy. You didn't have to anchor them down to anything. But they were all painted in a warehouse and then brought out strategically and placed in, in locations. Um, and they were viewable for a time. And then a lot of people that sponsored, say, a Charlie Brown ended up bringing it back to their business. Mm -hmm. 
Um, some were sold as opportunities, but most people that actually sponsored them ended up buying them um, as part of that process. So um, I would just say, could be something other than an animal. Um, if you wanted to maybe get creative and thinking about other things that represent Mountain View. Not to say animals are not a great path to go, just because again, you can be a little more abstract with it or there's other elements to Mountain View as well that- I had said transistors and no one liked that idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, maybe it makes sense to keep it as open as possible, right? Not having a list of five animals and say, if anyone has one you like, but then what would you like? Like in general, what would you like, right? Like, I mean, or what well, are the your problem ideas? is we're going out to like the business community and asking them. And if you say, draw me a beautiful picture, yeah, nothing. If you like that? give them a Mona Lisa and say, then they can like scribble on at it. At this point, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's brainstorming, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What, what well, kind of, it could be a, a thing. In this group, right? a this thing, is a bunch of artists. A thing here. or a plant. Or well, a, I mean, you could take a, like you're already doing, you just kind of take a consensus because some people might get super psyched on tech, some robot. I don't know. I'm not, but that doesn't mean much. Yeah. You know, and then you're going to be like more funded. Who knows? Like, yeah. Yeah. And I thought, John, that was a great idea because I was just thinking out of the box in terms of okay. what do people relate to Mountain View? It certainly is tech. So, yeah. okay, maybe it's we'll not start there. How, what, what does Mountain View mean to people? Yeah. Like, what are the things? Yeah. I, see, I like the way you're planning to pay the artists for the murals. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Where you say, like, we have so many square feet, so we're going to pay you $20,000 to do this mural, and then people can apply or whatever, you choose an artist and they know how much money they're going to make. And that's something the visual arts community would do, just like the artists. But I'm not sure about the artists. I don't think they're going to on getting good quality professional artists to paint those sculptures if they're going to have an unknown paycheck. Right? Right. You're going to get 25% of the sale. It may be $500, it may be $7,000, it may be $0. You're probably going to get high school kids. You may not get the best quality. <laughs> It's what they did in Cupertino yeah. in Los Altos. Yeah. It, so, it just seems like I'm going to reach out. I have the listings of Cupertino and all the artists that did it there, plus the C. Yeah. I know the woman who ran it for Rotary in Los Altos um, is in the art business. Mm -hmm. So um, she had a lot of artists that she knew she, so mm -hmm. to reach out to. So I'm going to use her. I'm also going to use you guys. Yeah, they just seem like two, two separate projects. It's a cool project to yeah. paint all these sculptures, but that project and then there's getting you know, painted in there. Two separate doing, projects. Doing one to accomplish the other seems a little clunky and it's going to add like a year right, of time until you can do the Well, I'm doing multiple ways of, but if I don't do, the, you know, I'm hoping to get money other ways. I've been applying to grants, but I also have to have a backup plan because I might not get any of those monies. And would I, if I have, you know, and I will get some stuff done because like um, the Methodists are funding these projects. So um, I will get some projects done, but some of the projects that I'd really like to work on is a harder way to fund. And if I don't get any of those grants, I need to find a second source. So I look at this as meeting arts, Mountain View needs, community needs and funding needs. Is this, is this just you or the artists? Okay. Well, who's driving it? Just me. Am I by myself? No, I have some other people that, like I was saying that I have a friend who's an artist who's working with me. I have another friend who um, is wants to do the business outreach. I have another one that is, you know, so I have other people who have committed to work with me on this. I, my background is project management. I would say the core skills. So managing these projects, this, that, that this is this is easy compared to the stuff I've done. <laughs> this has very few moving pieces. I don't have a hundred people in a room. Risk, risk factors are very different. And the risk factors are pretty low. It's like when I went in and talked to Odd Fellows, the first meeting, they were like, well, how do we know you'll follow through? Why should we hire you? And I said, well, 
the worst possible thing that will happen is I don't get funding and you don't have a mural. I said, you currently don't have a mural. You told me you don't have funding for a mural and you don't foresee when you could possibly have funding. So the worst possible thing is status quo. But if you bring me in, there is a chance I'll get funding and we'll get a mural. So there's only upside. And they were like, oh yeah. <laughs> They're not paying me to do it. So there's only upside. That's brilliant. <laughs> Very good. Um, wish you luck. Open it to public comments. Oh. <laughs> sure. So, anybody <laughs> online wishing to speak on this topic? Um, we are currently on item uh, 7.2, which was taken out of order. Anyone online wishing to speak on this topic, um, please raise your hand or hit star six. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's just a bit. <laughs> so I appreciate. If you have any questions, comments, we can. Oh yeah. Do you got? You have my email and uh, you text me or email me. So, um, send it to if you have oh. comments. Send it to Kirsten and we'll. Okay, great. Connect. Connect with great. Great. So Anita. I think I read Anita Claire in the agenda, but I think your last name is Rosen. Rosen, yes. Oh, well, because well. Because my email is so messed up and it keeps on sending things to my Anita Claire okay. site as opposed That's to. I didn't recognize when Yeah, you yeah, said to Anita. I have Anita at Arts Mountain View. I have a whole bunch of emails like most of us. <laughs> and well, we, we can fix that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it gets all messed up, but it doesn't matter. I get all of them. They all come to my email client, so I apologize for any That's confusion. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I just Thank texted you a couple of things oh, cool. that are regarding this. So. Okay, great. All right. All right. Good to see you. Thanks, Anita. Yeah. Um, then we go back actually to five upcoming agenda topics. Um, anybody wants to adjust future agenda? I'll, I can mention something because I was talking to Don, uh, Don Whitebread on the phone the other day. Um, I feel like the answer is probably no, we can't do this, but he wanted to see if we could explore as a committee the possibility. If you know, if a committee member knows in advance they're going to be absent and they, they can't remote in or whatever, something important that they like have a proxy about. Like, I wish I could designate someone to be like, oh yeah, Don supported this or whatever. So again, I know it's probably some city regulation or state regulation. We probably can't do anything about it, but it was just kind you of something. Like comment? Um, no, like an actual, an actual event. Like say, I'm not here on the eve of the 12 a guard strategy finally passing. And I'm like, oh man, I really wanted to vote in favor of that. And could I say, Susie is able to vote? Oh, that's Yes, for me. That's interesting to vote. Yeah. You get, yeah. In your vote already. And then, and it's, you can get you can write in, you can read your comments, like if you're not going to be. Would that count as public commentary, though? or is that... Yeah, yeah, it would count as public comment, but then you you, know, you would hear the comment and okay. take in the information. Got it. So it's like. So it wouldn't be considered a vote. But it's not a vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all I have. No. Moving on to six, then unfinished business, 6.1 capital improvement updates. So I'm going to take some those. The register. So the Ringstore Park Aquatic Center, we have some art updates. Um, so these are the mosaic fish that um, you uh, were saved. Um, oh, <laughs> from what I understand. I oh, actually see the colors. <laughs> what, what are these? Oh. They were on the old building. Oh, cool. Yeah, they were like facing the parking lot. They saved them. Yeah, yeah, they were safe. Oh, yeah. 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 They're often like open. I like that they're on this corrugated <laughs> metal <laughs> background, which makes it a bit yeah, almost often rustic yeah. because they're also they're a bit rustic. Terrible. Yeah, it's nice. What they did? Them. Them. <laughs> well, they were they were just very old and covered in dust and dirt and 
Is it just me that's going to decide to yeah. have them restored? Is that what well, we 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 said? To, what can you do? There's way too many. Very nice. Are they just the three that are being Correct. displayed so and are more saved, or is that's what's saved? I believe that's all that. So there was work done to refurbish. Um, and so it wasn't just washing them, it was actually refurbishing them. There were some that were not going to be saved. Um, so my understanding is these are the three that came out the best and um, put back up at the aquatic. And, and that's on the, that's in place, that's on the wall. That they're that's, so is that like the rentable room? Very nice. Or the, I'm not sure specifically which room we get. Okay. I think I remember some schematics from a long time ago. It was really nice. And there's um, the others. Did you have to hire an artist to refurbish? Um, on so I know they were working, I believe, with an architect on that. If I remember correctly, it looks like someone might have actually gone in and replaced some like block tiles. Uh, and this is um, a newer art piece by Masako. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the one of the wave benches uh, that was placed in the bar. Um, and here's the, the second. This redwood. What material is done? I don't remember. It's, uh, this is what you're looking at is they just finished completing putting in the skate stops on these um, benches. So these are going to be outside. Oh, I mean, that seems unnecessary because <laughs> it's fenced in. And you have to go past the, the staff to get to this area, right? I find it very unlikely that someone will be skateboarding by the pool. Um, and I do have a video of the colors being coordinated. With the... okay. I, I think that's a like base color or something. I'm pretty sure the final color is going to be blue. It's going to be different. Oh, okay. And these are going to be outside. Recall outside, you come in uh, as a, uh, the entrance area. Correct. So this is oh. a video of the. Mm -hmm. and like, all of the high concrete. Yeah, that's about particular waves. Oh. <laughs> um, so this will be inside the building. Yeah. Right. Um, all different sizes and shapes. Um, it'll have a little bit of a 3D effect because it'll be positioned off the wall. Mm -hmm. and, and you see these when you come into the doors, I, I recall, right? Mm -hmm. And then down the hallway. Bubble pattern. Okay, so the update for the Rainstorm Park Aquatic Center. Still no opening, I think. Still shooting for summer and until the weather kind of clears up. It's the landscape. I was there a couple of days ago and the landscaping still very rough. I don't know how it looks inside. Um, so for the other projects, we don't have any updates right now on Rainstar Park Heroes or the grade separation projects. We talked about Evelyn Park today. Um, for Villa Chiquita Park and Sylvan Park, those are going to the City Council on May 14. And um, community for Sylvan Park, um, community services, they actually received donations of benches that are made out of wind turbines. Um, so like the arms of wind turbines. Um, so, the park of this? Sylvan Park. Yeah, the volleyball. Two, yeah, 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 the volleyball with the two benches. Where the art grant was not sufficient to yeah. attract yeah. any artists. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. instead, they're doing windmill. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then they have, an, I think they were donated three benches, so they're going to put one at the senior center, too. Do you have a picture of those? Could those be painted? They look very. They look like benches, but they're the very, very large wind turbines, and they've been able to 
instead of putting them into the landfill, they are repurposing them and creating, in a sense, street furniture out of them. Okay. So they're taking the natural bends of the turbine blades and generating uh, different types of bench styles. Um, we were very fortunate to get a uh, all of these benches. There's actually six of them donated to the city. Um, they can be painted um, as well. Um, so it actually ended up Solving uh, solving the issue at Sylvan Park. Um, we do have a, so if there's no other further questions on six point one, we do have a hand raised. Um, like, yes. Can we invite public comment? Sure. Bruce. Thank you all. I actually had something for the last Why item, but you didn't take public comment, so that kind of flew by, but. I will just note since I'm here um, that I do like the pieces in the recreation center that were um, retrieved and reused. I was yeah anticipating that those look very nice the way they're placed. So that's my comment on that. Thank you. So moving on to six point two, then uh, discussion on the city council direction related to art, Evelyn. Okay. So at the last meeting, um, the committee discussed the public art, public art um, your recommendation and how it relates to park floor experience and um, how lighting could be incorporated into the piece and whether that could be reduced. And this was after getting some feedback from the city council. Um, So the Looking Up Arts team, um, they shared this revised concept uh, to the committee last month. Um, the direction from the committee was to um, work with, work with um, the artists, work with internally to um, see that lighting can be consistent with other lighting standards in Mountain View Parks. Um, so we, we talked with the community services department. Um, operational hours of the city parks are between 6 a.m. and then one half hour after sunset. Um, Looking up arts, they reiterated that um, the, the lighting on the sculpture can be adjusted remotely at any time. The color can be adjusted. Um, the level of lighting can be adjusted. And it can be changed to align with um, seasonal changes in time. So that it matches up with that one half, you know, six a.m. to one half hour after sunset timing. Um, so as it relates to the ground level experience, public work staff um, said the art would need to be placed on the pavers within um, the plaza. So, um, so if you can see it in the staff report. It's this location number one, um, and to maintain consistency throughout the plaza, the pavers are. That you you can kind of see the lines on here. The pavers that'll be placed in this area are going to be um, placed all around the bottom of the art piece too. Um, and looking at Bart's was interested in potentially taking those pavers and stamping something into them, or uh, like stamping prints of butterflies into them to match um, the sculpture, similar to what they had proposed um, in their original concept, where they were going to stamp into the concrete base. Um, so we're we're talking to the public works team, talking with um, the Looking Up Arts team to see if that's a feasible option, if it makes sense to do, um, to like stamp something into them. Um, so right now our recommendation is to, um, or we're requesting that the committee um, discuss this further, see if there's, if you have any additional recommendations or augmentations to the proposal. And then we can take that to the city council. So questions. So so under, do I understand them correctly that we have that this the staff recommendation is that that we would um 
So the park hours kind of kind of that dictate when how long the uh, sculpture will be illuminated. Yeah. 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 yeah so we, uh, and and if we had any any ideas or feedback about the papers, those two those two items. Any questions? Who was our staff member last time? Was it David Printy or the other? He's on remote. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. it's on remotely and Merry Christmas mm -hmm. here as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you there, there, there was feedback regarding the holds. And, and so I was wondering is when you look at the, the sculpture, um, the holds are very prominent. And you know, I think the feedback we heard, like from, like from Bruce, is to make it more uh, nature oriented rather than steel poles. I don't know if that was discussed with, um, with, with an artist. Um, in my side conversation with the artist, he, he was very knowledgeable about um, the use of milkweed and, um, as a plant that they, that, that they feed on. And is there an, uh, can, can milkweed, for example, be incorporated in this rather than just kind of steel, steel poles? Was that, was that at all discussed with them or can you come up with that? Um, yeah, we did. So we did talk about that with them. Um, I think their recommendation was to um, adjust the color in some way to uh, adjust the color of the poles in some way to make it look more natural. Um, I think by creating, uh, making it look like uh, leaves might be too costly on their budget. Um, and, uh, John, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, thank you. The other element we're going to do is uh, incorporate some different etching on the poles uh, but as far as actually bending the poles and creating a very different kind of pattern how to anchor the butterflies uh, was getting a little bit on scope and budget so um, ultimately the the poles as they're as are represented in the drawing that's in front of you right now are going to remain uh, they are looking at putting uh, treatment on the pole and doing some etching on the pole would help reduce um, the, the impact of kind of a shiny metal pole. Um, but that was about the extent given cost constraints and associated with it. Yeah. Did they, do, sorry, did they know about the pavers as well? I was wondering if if they had also given input what should be on the pavers, their suggestion to do butterflies. We let them know um, that, um, so the public works team wanted to um, add the pavers on top of the base of the, the art to keep it consistent um, throughout the, that section of the park. And um, when we brought that up to the art, looking up arts team, they brought up the idea of doing something with them, printing on them in mm -hmm. some way. So. Um, we sent them over the, the specs of the paper, and we're gonna they're gonna look in to see whether it's a feasible option yeah. within the project. Are those pavers broken up? Is there like plant? I mean, is there grass in between, or is it a continuous? There could something be planted basically between the pavers. The pavers are nested together. They're it's not meant to be paver. A little bit of grass, like. Thinking about yeah. grass as almost the grout, it's it, it's going to be paver to paver, the um, and they're not long pavers; they're, they're the short pavers. So, the the sculpture itself is going to be put on a concrete base, but it's sunken. Then the pavers will be on top of that, um, and it was actually the artist recommend. The artist's comment was. Well, we'd love to kind of entertain what we could do with the pavers because they would really like to provide that experience on the ground as well. And so there, um, if you have uh, the, sp the specs for what the pavers are and they, they can look at whether it's some type of etching or some other element that they can do with the paver to kind of have some representation on the ground um, as part of this project. Can you be painted as well? Well, typically the, and I'm going to look to my colleague uh, across the way, um, typically um, when you're doing pavers, 
like that, you're also trying to address storm runoff. Um, and so typically the pavers are designed to kind of uh, treat water as it, it filters down. And I, I suspect that painting over that diminishes the ability for water to appropriately drain down. But typically when you do pavers like that, they're, they're designed to kind of slow and have the water kind of work downwards and they have a little porosity in them. I suspect if covering it with paint, that would <coughs> potentially defeat, but I might be off on that. I, I would agree with John and I'm saying, um, but yes, it's definitely meant for a storm water runoff to kind of percolate and um, we call it uh, permeous. Um, and so I think adding paint, I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to diminish the water. That was just one. Any other questions? What's the dimension? As I recall, it says 25 feet high. And and what's the width? And where does the human do they walk underneath it or around it? Uh, it was designed to be walked underneath at the lowest point. It would be the low the lowest butterfly would be and so thinking like a traditional basketball hoop. Yeah, that's ten feet. So you'd be able to walk underneath it and look up. Um, so at the lowest point, it was supposed to be 10, and I believe the highest was eight, nine, nine feet. Five feet. So, so yes. on this thing, the lowest one would be, that's 10 feet. About the height of the ceiling, right? It's high. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, do we want to open for public comments before we finish? I guess I have a comment. Comment slash question. I don't know for David, Ricky. Um, is there? Okay. okay. So at the last meeting, I recall um, the question to staff being something more along the lines of Is there an overarching policy for lighting in public parks in Matthew? And how has lighting been decided um, on a case by case basis in the past? Because we know there are different types of lights in parks that shut off at different times, right? Like tennis courts or dog lights that are on a timer at some dog parks. Correct. Like, yeah. And last night I went around on my bike and I verified that, you know, long after sunset, you have lights on at uh, Rainstorm Park, at Eagle Park and Pioneer Park. So not every park is like that, but we clearly don't have a consistent policy. So our question was to research the lighting policy. So I'm kind of disappointed that the answer was, oh, well, parks close a half hour after sunset because we already knew that last meeting. It's not any new information to help us make that decision. Well, I, I think something to consider is that the, the lighting component of this art is fairly muted mm -hmm. and it's not good. It's not something you could read by uh, it's more just you would be able to see the color uh, of the of the wings and they might, you know, be modulating or, you know, they could do something. But it's not like lighting as in a lamp in a in a park where or somewhere where it's lighting your the way you walk. So it's not that the level of brightness is well below any level that would be regulated by say a dark skies ordinance, for example. And I, I would also like to follow up. We did have this conversation with the community services department. So Rankstorf is a slightly different example. That is a design pedestrian path mm -hmm. to get from the senior center to Rangstorf Boulevard. It's, mm -hmm. So this is not a sports park. Yeah. This is not a path that's meant to get you anywhere. It is a park that serves that housing development yeah. in particular. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there is no design for lighting for that park. That is depending on what the park is solving for is whether lights are actually into the park or not. Mm -hmm. So parks that are designed to technically close after sunset, mm -hmm. there is no lighting. That is the standard. When there is a pedestrian path, then the lighting is treated almost like, I'm using a very bad analogy, street lighting mm -hmm. 
for public safety for people to egress and ingress. That's kind of what I saw. Through. Park so this is not a park like that. So applying that lighting standard to this is. So is that an actual, is that a policy or is that just kind of staff deciding on a case by case basis? This feels like this kind of park. Let's do this. That, that is how the park was designed. It's mm -hmm. not meant. It is a park that is very insular to that housing housing development surrounds that. Yes. Um, so it is um, so applying that lighting standard is is not consistent with like a Rangsdorf park. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to to the comment by my colleague David, yes, the the LEDs allow for programming, but. There is no, this was never programmed for light to begin with. So that was the direction of, you know, the park is intended to close. People will be in parks whenever they're in parks, but technically it's signaling this park is closed. Yeah. And therefore there is no plan for lighting in there. But the, the park has like a walkway all around it because yeah. alongside the buildings and a much wider walkway to the left. I mean, if we were walking from Evelyn to the right would be the sculpture on a smaller walkway and a much wider walkway to the left that goes Yeah, this pathway is all around the park. And that has lighting or at least low lighting, right? For people to find There is no, in the park, there is no lighting. So I think it's a little misleading to say this park is not there because I went, it's true, there are no city lights at this park, but I went there last night. Like you said, people will be there when they'll be there. It was 10 or 11 people at the park and you could see this is the lighting situation on one end of the park. It's pretty, pretty well lit. Um, but these, they're like two to three. that to the camera? I don't know if I can show that to the camera. That might not work. Where is the cross street um, to But this is yeah. another path here. Oh, wow. And that's that's just the ambient light from the apartment complex around it, lighting the path. So this is actually more brightly lit than either Rainstorf or Are those Pioneer. little dogs we see in the... In the There's more lights in the distance. Is that like low, like... Slide. Yeah, they're like two or three feet tall, but it also has on one end of the park these big like oh, streets. That's what I house. meant. Like there is this these wide are, walkway, right? Those are on private property. The city does not get to turn them off. They're going to be on all night. And they that's on... and the park is when I'm looking at that picture. The park is just to the right. Yeah, yeah. when the park is like technically closed, all these lights are on. I counted it's, thirty plus lights. Speed it's speed it's speed. very bright. <laughs> it's but that's for the. All Did you have a chance, Jesse? Yeah, it's the little bit of the park. Yeah, but it's, that's on the house. Since it's, it's, it's yeah. for the right against Evelyn. Uh, and there's, there are street lights. Is on there the street, street well. lights? There's two street lights. Where the park is, or is there a gap there? Or they kind, of, kind of, you know, are there, yeah. there's two street lights on the street. Two street lights yeah, also, on, on also Evelyn. So when you compare it to like Eagle Park, Pioneer Park, Rainstorm Park, and those are like designed for pedestrians, and I hit the lights are for safety. This is brighter than any of those three parts, even though, like you say, it's not designed to be lit up with city lighting at night. It is very clearly lit by all of the surrounding lighting from the apartments. So I think having the sculpture be lighted at night will have a negligible impact. It would not be noticeable to the sky. If we go any before we go any further, can we open? Anyone wishing to speak on this topic? Uh, hit star six or raise your hand. That was weird. Yeah, I had my hand, my up. hand up. I guess you didn't see it, so I had to raise well, it. I, I saw it flash real quickly. So okay. Uh, yeah, I was afraid you weren't seeing it, so I turned it back on. Um, Bruce England, Wisman Station Drive. So I won't repeat too much of what I said last time. I don't care for this our piece at all for a variety of reasons that I said it it looks like butterflies impaled on posts um just for starters and it's made of material that clearly isn't going to be readily recyclable or anything like that and so it seems like it's antithetical to sending a message about taking care of pollinators and nature in general if I had spoken during 
uh, upcoming topics during that part of your meeting, I would have said, I'd really like you guys to have discussions about incorporating nature much more into art decisions um, than, you, than you do currently. And it certainly applies here. The one thing I will say that is a good um, option or a good feature is that the lighting can be adjustable. So as the dark sky ordinances are established, that programming should be able to match whatever the dark sky ordinances are. The lighting around it, that's a whole other topic. And whatever happens with the dark sky ordinances, members of the public are hoping and will be advocating for guidance to private property owners also. So it will apply to parks, it will apply to public works, it will apply to property owners, and hopefully we can start bringing our light levels all over Mountain View uh, down below where they are today. Now on the, the art piece itself and on the pavers, I would suggest looking at 100 Moffat, that development there, because they put in pavers in the walkway, the Paseo there, that has those gaps in between. And I guess there was concern at the time that those might get filled with garbage and stuff like that. So they were monitoring it. And it actually has been fine. I guess just wind and water and whatever keeps all that stuff at bay. So that might be a good example to look at since the city was concerned that that might not work out um, in the long run. Um, just trying to see if there's anything else to say here. I mean, I know it's late in the game to say, let's not have this project at all, but honestly, I'll just say that's how I feel about it. I don't see anything to like in this project. The pavers might be a better option because it's a little bit more natural material. It's not great, but it's still better than steel posts and electronics, which is what's being uh, put forward here. So that's kind of the bottom line for me. Thank you. Thank you. So discussion of the, what, what we want to recommend regarding <laughs> the light situation. So and I'll, just repeat, some feedback for the I'll just repeat from what I said when we first discussed that I did think this piece fits within this park. I think it it's for the LED and as I understood now further and so high, 25 feet. I always thought it would be a great piece for Castro Street or public area where people <coughs> would be around, but not within a park. This is a just as a comment on the piece itself and where and where it's being placed. I think it's a nice piece, but not for a park. Piece that we could we could put it into Castro Street or the transit center or a place where people are walking around would be great. But um, not for a not for, not for a park. <coughs> yeah, I guess I wish I could have. Uh, I wish I would have invited you, but it was kind of last minute my trip to the park. But yeah. we've all we've talked about how context is important, and we want to be on site and see what the conditions are like. <coughs> not, <coughs> sorry. In the <laughs> I mean, I don't know what options we think. It was by far the best, best option we had. And what I like about it is I understand all those concerns, but what I really like is that it's tall, that it's big. Those buildings are really high. Um, it makes an impact. It is, it is I, I feel like, you know, there's different ways to, 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 um, to depict things, right, and to 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 show to show and and talk in art, right, and and I feel like that is their way, and um, it is about pollinators and awareness of that, and that I really like, and I like that it's tall. The lighting, I feel like, because it's on a busy street and it's actually on the street side, I thought it would be on the corner, like the mm -hmm. inner corner, because that was one of the suggested locations. Yeah. But it's on the street side, right? Where there's literally just a sidewalk and then some trees and then Evelyn. And um, in that way, I feel like yeah, it's also some a, a sculpture for people who walk by or drive by maybe. Yeah, so in that way, it's kind of nice that it's big and it's kind of a modern building. So I feel like the modern interpretation of all that is that. I mean, I, I do understand the concerns. I was hope that's why I was asking for 
like what's underneath if it were, were in in the grass it would, would have like a pollinator garden underneath have plants there that would make a nice I would just the garden. contrast of all of that and and i would that would, that would can you turn that to see how long it's been there um, okay yeah. thanks so i i personally i think the height is okay it's good for this location because you can see how tall the buildings mm -hmm. are around it Super high density. It is yeah. very high. It's very it's high. And high trees urban. too so, yeah. in front of it. I think it will work yeah, on it's that modern. Location. Really modern and urban looking. So yeah. yeah. And clearly, I, like I mean, it. if it's gonna go somewhere, I didn't know what the park looked like. I was a little bit apprehensive seeing that. Yeah. But now that yeah. I see the park, it looks like a city park. Look at mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a nature preserve. Yeah. 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 Oh, just wanted to comment. So those are those improvements in the picture are temporary, but we do have like a actual park design. So, oh, so when you say improvements, do you mean like the plants I pointed out? And stuff? Like yeah. That? So that one's actually that was installed oh, okay. by the developer. As oh, okay. Like a so that all that. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be so changed. Yeah. 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 So we have the concept back here. So oh, okay. Right now it's not. It's not fitted. It's yeah, already it's been built. The solution is a big. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's mostly grab right now, but there's a couple yeah. of yeah. Like, drive resistant grass over there. Uh, what do we think about the pavers? Or the, is it like stop imprinting them? Would it, did they say if it would add additional cost? Or are they able to just throw that in? I think they still need to. Look into over there. Okay. Yeah. I think it might look weird. I mean, just hearing now how high that is, everything's so high, and then you drop down to like this. Is it going to blend and then in a weird way? I mean, or is it going to be big, like span over multiple pavers? Maybe look like kind a shadow, shed the shadow of the butterflies. If it's just a couple of small ones, yeah, they wouldn't do that. No. The but the I mean, the original concept was to just have a concrete base, so it would have been pavers and then concrete. Okay. Um, but then um, to keep the consistency, um, public works plan is to put the pavers over yeah. the base of it. Yeah. Um, so they, uh, depending on the cost, they could just do um, what they might be able to do. Uh, maybe just leave the pavers as they I, I would say the, the butterflies as was explained to us were not envisioned to be big. Mm -hmm. They were meant to be more life-size butter mm -hmm. on, on the ground. Mm -hmm. It sounds a little like stuff on the ground strange. was meant to be. Yeah. Because the original treatment was an LED screen that would be mimic the movement of butterflies. Yeah, they're gonna be flying by like on like yeah. so a TV screen in the sky. I don't know why not let the art be the art and the pavers be public. Yeah, that's reasonable. That seems like it does. It's like trying to make something integrate something that after the fact. So I would just so um, maybe frame this a little bit. So recognizing that this committee already determined the art piece, yeah, it went to council and council came back with, "We're referring this back to you to consider light." Consistency with dark skies was a big proponent. And then what is the experience that someone on the ground experiencing the butterfly was the referral. So the not dictating what you should, how you should answer this, but the piece is the piece that we recommended and we don't want to make any changes. We work with the art staff and committee work with the artists they've redesigned the bottom part of it it's this they're going to light it this way and we're comfortable with that and we're bringing it back to you or you could potentially do something different but recognize you already brought forward a recommendation so the initial ask was consider light what does that mean in this project what is the experience that was the direction back to you Saw or consider. So maybe looking at it from that lens, maybe to start. Yeah. And do you stay within that recommendation or tweak? Because ultimately, we need to come back to council 
take on your behalf to council what, what we want we are recommending this and we're recommending that the leds stay in this we think it's consistent with the overall design and we want the lights to be on all night or we want the lights not to be on we can I, whatever it may be so, so can i ask like so in the current recommendation the leds are gone completely or they have mm. been turned down to uh a... so since i believe since it's gone to council and then sent back to us for improvements we got this, this 75 percent reduction in, in like uh lumens right and then it went from the the screen on the bottom of the butterfly which that shows like images of butterflies flapping and flying and migrating that has been changed to this, which is the softly glowing, semi-translucent plastic. Instead of moving imagery, yeah, yeah. Now, more of a glow. Which is greatly, I in, which I think has greatly and increased. turned down so, the light. And it turned, so we turned down the light. I think the artists helped accommodate that nicely. And I think we've also increased the viewing angles a lot. Because now you don't have to be right under it or at a specific angle to see the screen. You can just see the softly glowing butterfly wings from wherever you are. And it's a better in terms of viewing angles, which was one of the concerns council had. So. so what we need to decide is, do we want to, with these changes, mm -hmm. do we want to recommend that this goes mm -hmm. back to council? Yeah. I, Does anybody yeah. want to make a motion? Is the paver thing separate than from uh, the lighting? So the, so, the paver or the the concrete thing was a that was part of the original proposal. Yeah, they had stamped was, in the original proposal. They were going to stamp the concrete, yeah. but not in the they're, revised. They're proposal. Around, yeah, they, they, they would have stamped it. The, the, the revised proposal, in light of where it's being located in, in a paver area, they're looking at whether they can actually go forward with that. Type of treatment on the pavers or not mm -hmm. that they haven't determined that but so the recommendation could in theory be continue to explore that because we want that to be part of this uh actually i just found something in the, re the revised text it says um just it under additional detail activation of the wall walkway <clears throat> embossed into the walkway below will be swirling silhouettes of monarch butterflies and this is, uh, but that this was a is concrete from... base. Yeah. Okay, that was not the paver. So the current is pavers, and whether or not the pavers whether they can, can do that in that, that same way. And so, yeah. do we decide whether we want them to pursue the possibility of that, or just well. to nix it? Pardon we me. We could direct them and say yes, we want this stamped in the pavers, or we could say. We'll leave it open as a possibility and let the artist coordinate the staff and do that if it's possible and if they want to. And if not, they don't have to do it, which is kind of the route that I'm leaning towards. Yeah, I guess you're picking up on it. We want to enhance the experience on the ground with the sculpture, having the butterflies into the papers, step and see it, will enhance the experience. I mean, if they're the willing to do it, yeah, yeah, it's a great add on. And, mm -hmm. In terms of how know. they do it, I mean, we, well, maybe we that's usually leave that up to the artists. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah like we leave it up to them. So, so it would answer council's request. Can we enhance the experience of the sculpture? That we ask the artist to do the treatment in a way that it will enhance the experience. The way they feel that, yeah, will optimize the art piece. Yeah. yeah. That we're in favor of a treatment to investigate the paver treatment and yeah. that, it, that our hope is that that it would enhance if they feel art. that it would enhance it and if not it's their art so it would be two part so we did the lighting with one and we approved the current um modified lighting mm -hmm. so i want to i guess make a motion that we accept the revised proposal with reduced lighting but keep the lights on all night and leave open the possibility of some kind of stamp design on the paper is similar. The artist could do that if it is feasible. Yeah, I'm going to make a motion that we 
also second. I'll second the motion. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Yeah. All right. So um, you have a motion, you have a second. Is there any more just questions or discussion on that before you call for votes? Okay. Call for vote. I guess my only question is, did you say the light's going to stay on all night? Yes, that's, that's the motion light. I'm making. Yeah, it's the re it is the revised version of this art, which is 75% less bright, and it includes no direct lighting, which the old one had. That was an issue where you could like see the LED from the eye. You can't see any inputs of light on the sculpture. They're all pointing within the butterfly wing so that it goes. You can change so, the light. So what? So yeah. Just just to yeah. all night, you mean at 1 a.m., yeah. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So if I had to be extremely specific, I would say from sundown to sundown. Uh, yeah, I'm not up for the all around the clock. Light. That's the only thing I'm not agreeing with. Um, I, I mean, we are so we have all around. You're having, all a around you're having a conversation. Lighting already. So that vote. That motion failed. Yes, we, we are not. Yes, you did not have a majority, so that right. failed. Now, have a conversation. <laughs> so we need Ask to your have questions. a conversation on how like that. long. Because well, that was an, I, I was going <laughs> added information. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Did you see? So you, okay. Well, yeah. So is the revised, the revised motion includes to have the lights on? So the motion, the, the motion that was in front of you was to take the design as it is proposed in your packet, give um, some uh, give some uh, flexibility to the artist whether they can actually do something on the the pavers, yeah. but to keep lights on throughout the night. Yeah. And that, that did not have not a majority. <laughs> Uh, support so that motion fails. So right now you're back to the drawing board. Okay. So is there a different motion that the committee would like to enter? So maybe way to approach this is what does everyone agree on as it relates yeah. to the sculpture, blah blah. And maybe the conversation is is focusing on the light. There may be some. Not alignment on that. Yeah. Where is that comfortable point in order to make a motion? So, well, do we all agree with letting the artist explore the paver and the print? And head we stuff. Can, and head. That I think separate. that, yes. I mean, I'm just saying if we all agree on that, we know yeah. that we'll all vote. And then yeah. are we are so in in line with that. And I feel like we need to talk about the technical technical changes, off, right? right? That the artists made. The yeah, changes? The technical changes, the LED, like how the screen works differently and it was yeah, well, no, 75%. That. Yeah. that, how I formulated it yeah. before you before you made the motion, that yeah. we agree. Yeah. yeah. And I need to ask again, the revision, does that include in any way that it's on all night? Or is that... No, they just they said they can adjust. They it. have the ability. They say yeah. they they yeah. didn't take a stand on that. They yeah. just said it we can adjust. They would like to have it, the this, is this, oh, this is a decision. decision we made. You. Right. No, yeah, I'm, I I wanted to ask if that was already packaged in what, or if that is something. What we, was framed by by David was that the light. It is is a park, um, a city park. The light. Goes down at uh, right. uh, six. At, yeah, so six a.m. comes right. at, comes up at uh, six, and then goes off a half hour after sunset. After sunset, after sunset. Yeah, half hour yeah. After, after sunset. After so sunset. like today, so it would be at uh, eight seven. Eight, yeah, eight 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 eight, eight o'clock. Yeah. So so, so well, the would, park closes at that time. The park is, is park effectively park? closed, but it's. But it can't close, yeah, right? Because yeah, yeah. there's no physical barrier. Okay, that so like work. Mercy Bush, you know, it's supposed yeah. to be closed. They turn the spring flames on at 11 because they don't want the kids there anymore. Or yeah. I'm just guessing. If they go on anyway, but I will tell you there's people at the park. Yeah, but this is like enclosed, is by, yeah. right? And a lot of people walking at any, any hour probably going home to their apartment. So Lacey, so, considering like 
I uh, see that. I agree situation. with you a little bit. I want more. to. I want to make this offer. Yeah. What if instead of the lights being on at the full, it's been reduced seventy five percent. They're already dim. But what if it was you know decreased further at night? So left on. So you know it could be because they did say they could adjust the. Brightness oh, you mean and, to decrease the light and yeah, leave it on all night? Yeah. So, like, just turning it so off say, at like midnight or something? Say it goes, yeah, it goes, maybe it's at full strength until, you know, 10, 11, 12, whatever. And then it gets cut in half again by 50%. Now it's super dead. Are all the other lights on all the the ones surrounding the park yeah, are like the low lights around the pavers in those little. I don't know, like eleven. I feel like that that area <laughs> that they're going to landscape, which is super different now. Yeah. I'm kind of I haven't seen this place. It's kind of yeah. new for me. Yeah. So the way it's going to be landscaped, there is going to yeah. be a space. I do feel like just in terms of life form. I know yeah. this may seem crazy, but just to honor that little space and have it be dark. But for it, a period of time, it won't be dark. So what? What, what will Whatever change is the plants. Happens. That's what Mary's whole yeah. Uh, sorry, um, yeah, the plants. Uh, oh, Mary Chris, that's what Mary Chris reference was that the the current um, that the improvements of the plants. That's what will change. But all the lighting that I showed you all along the perimeter of the park that's on private property that belongs to the apartments so that will not be changing. Yeah, that will still be a full strength. There will still always be a little bit of light there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what if we? search for a compromise mm -hmm. i feel okay. like i actually feel like that it makes the art a bit more precious if it's not on that's but what i think it's a nice but like, i feel I sunset is kind of not the right oh, time because think, yeah, yeah. a lot of people depends on i mean a lot of people come home at that time yeah. and they're not home all day and, and, and they live really there it for and they will never day. see it illuminate. Well, that's why I was thinking more like 10 or 11. Like I feel like night. 10 or 11. Like, that's I feel, how I felt. I Something like that. Using a specific number like that than this half hour after sunset. Thing. And I mean, because that's going to make it difficult to program. The artists are going to have to constantly change. I'd it. say it like 11 or 10. Year. Yeah, I have like a fixed feel. time. Like, like what is a, a reasonable time where people, yeah. I would say probably Could you go 10. For yeah, and then people <laughs> for, go out to dinner and they want to What is a reasonable home? time yeah. people I feel like, but I, don't, I feel like all night, again. it's just, I don't know, there's something in me that's like, oh, I don't know. But yeah, I do yeah, feel something like, like that. And a little bit later. I mean, we have the comfortable situation that the artists say they can program that. Yes. From well, that's, even. Well, so I'm even if there's that. like feedback that 10 is too late yeah. or too early, they could adjust it. Well, I'm a little, this is why I want to pick an exact time and say 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock or whatever. Because even though the artists are saying now, like, oh, yeah, we can change it throughout the year. You know, what happens if this nonprofit doesn't you exist know, in two years, right? That would actually speak against sunset as well, because sunset is nine o'clock. If you want to be a stickler, it's highly varied. Different every day. Oh, yeah. And also, sunset in the summer is like nine o'clock. They can't adjust yeah. that, right? So, we, can't, we can't have them adjust it every single day. So, will they adjust it monthly? Will it be quarterly? That's yeah. extra ongoing Work. labor from them. And it may fall off at some point. So I think it's better just and to program I mean, it once and be done with it. Another thought is also their lights during the day. They're not even that visible. You need darkness to actually see this. Can you, yeah, piece that, that's what I'm wondering. The full glory. So I think you need to stay. You need it on at 6 a.m. Or you think otherwise nice. you don't even see what's going on. Yeah, through. I think really? if these lights are on in the day, I don't think it'll be really visible. I think, yeah, it needs some time in the dark to be. So remember during the day, top is somewhat yeah. translucent, yeah. so it's yeah. taking yeah. the natural the sunlight. sunlight. Yeah. Natural light. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not LED light. It's going to be glow. It's going to use the sunlight to, to have cool so effects. Are, are they sharing that the effect, effectiveness of the lighting is really during the darker times? Well, no, but they changed the design. Jesse was saying, so it, it's translucent, so during the yeah. sundial. Yeah. So, so then you the can will come through with the, the, the two of them. And then yeah. in the so they evening. need the lights on during the day then. No, yeah. it's, it's, it, but it's not, it doesn't what that's not what illuminates the sculpture, it's the yeah. sun going through yeah. it. Yeah. What Jesse, so Jesse's yeah. saying, let's keep that going into the evening, yeah. at least yeah. through the it'll, evening. It'll, it'll transform so it, from yeah. cool, the sun shining through this to wow, it's glowing yeah. in the dark. Yeah. It's very different. Soft glow. Soft glow. Soft glow. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's what Jesse's saying. Let, let's keep it alive. 
yes. through the evening, at least yes. through the evening. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a half hour. Sunset in the winter time is so I agree with you. No one's going to be able to. So that yeah. looks like we're in agreement. We agree. Pick, pick time. Well, Jesse, so we, we just really want to know what the meeting is having it all on. I'm a night owl. I think, I think okay. there's the time. Here's an argument that's not just specific to me, an yeah. example of who works nine to five jobs, who works office jobs, yeah. middle class to yeah. people, yeah. and people who work a swing shift or are working all night. Um, currently, the way parks are in my view, if you, you can't go to a park half hour after sunset, some people are effectively banned from enjoying that amenity uh -huh. in Manhattan. Uh -huh. And it's a social equity issue to me uh -huh. because I see that as affecting the poor disproportionately. Uh -huh. And saying sorry, you have the job that works makes you work these hours. You can't use our parks at all, and uh -huh. that's that's terrible. And, well, and I'm fine if you. I mean, personally. So what are what are the what are the, throw out some times? So what are you want to say? Well, it could be a venue. So true, and you could say the people but, on the corner of Bernardo who enjoy this park too, yeah. and they're in. Yeah, yeah, anyone could walk by just yeah. for the average person walking on the sidewalk. I I would think they should be able to look over and say, "Oh, cool, it's a nice sculpture." That you so, 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 so what, no, what, what time would you feel I, comfortable? No, if we don't, if we, if we had yeah, resistance for all night, I would, I would like it to go until eleven. To eleven. Yeah. Then turn. Then uh. So make a motion. That's when. That's when make turn. A motion. Right. Nana, let's let's have a round. I I wanna. Well, okay. This is one other just thoughtful thing. If this park is among the residents, you know, I'm just thoughtful mm -hmm. of people living right at the park, and yeah. if that's going to be a draw for yeah. late night. Personally, if I lived above a park. I wouldn't want a lot of people going on in that yeah. park past like 10. That's yeah. me because I am a quiet person. I like to go to bed and I just feel, you feel like more safe. And yeah. so that's, that's why the 11 for me is like yeah. a little bit just, and no one's really going to maybe yeah. if they're in the park at 10, they might not leave at 10. Yeah. Here's my, my anecdote from visiting the park the other night. So uh -huh. take it with a grain of salt, but the people who I saw in the park at that time, Group of three smokers who live there. They go uh -huh. out and smoke cigarettes. Yeah. And then someone walking their dog. They yeah. went into the park. You know, that's because yeah. dogs got to poop. Yeah. And I think those kinds of people who live there and are you know, smoking a cigarette or walking the dog or whatever, they're probably going to continue to do that regardless of whether or not there is a lighted public restroom. They will. Oh, but so. I just knowing, like I said, if you purchase that, I don't know if it's rental, but if that's your yeah. home, I just like, I think that's me rentals. personally. And I like my home to be kind of quiet and not yeah. just everything sort of closed down. Mm -hmm. And that that's why the 10 o'clock for me is more, but I'm not like, you know, oh, it's just a thought. And yeah. that's just me. There was also a theme with the park, as I recall, that they wanted to have as a, mm -hmm. the parks and rec, they wanted to have as a kind of a nature, mm -hmm. nature. Camp. Right. So, 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 so we should have that in mind. The theme was love of, love of nature. Not love of nightlife. Know. Well, yeah, not yeah. <laughs> but it's not a disco environment. It's a theme of nature, right? So, just bring that into the discussion. Well, maybe, uh, is or it going to cause problems people? with people? That's what I just think. Are people going to complain? I know there might be advocates yeah. too, but I'm I just think, thinking of the other I side think, in terms of 10, 11. I know a lot of yeah. things like 10. That's a little. Yeah. I, I don't want the visual arts committee to. You know, shoot ourselves in the foot with the first lighted sculpture that we have, and that's an outdoor lighted sculpture, right? And, yeah. and decide on a very earlier well, time this... when we don't have to. I would <clears throat> sure there there could be complaints, there could be problems. I would prefer to say, let's wait and see if there are problems. If people are if there's an uproar and people are like, oh man, eleven is way too late yeah. for this, then they'll complain, and then we can change the lighting because the artists have the ability to do that. We can change the programming. I don't think it'll make a huge difference between. Them. Okay. But if it does, people will, you know, make their voices heard, and we can alter that. Does anybody else have any thoughts? I'm personally, I'm a night owl, but I have a lot of friends who don't do double digits. I understand that, and um, I would probably be more comfortable with ten. But I understand Jesse's reasoning. I feel like, well, maybe we say eleven, but we're fully fine with ten as well. Like we're good. Mm -hmm. If that is, a, we recommend a later time, but we, in our recommendation, we actually say, but we wanna, we wanna see how how this works. This is a first for us. The artist can also change it to a different time. So it's also they designed 
for the peace now that time is adjustable. So from the peace perspective, from the, from the integrity of the peace, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it's just strictly a question of how to best to enjoy it. And, and, and so we have the flexibility and then what you can say, you know, 10 or 11 yeah. based upon the final uh, yeah. feedback from the, from, the, uh, from the residents around yeah. or something. Like I, would, that. I would specifically say resident. <laughs> resident feedback would be the most important thing for, you know. Yeah. And if, you know, if I live across the city, it's not really my business when I mean, what happens <laughs> in that little so, so we should pull, pull the residents to finalize between the, right. the, 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 the that may be 10, 10, 10 or maybe too big of an ask for staff to say pull them um ideally this kind of thing would have been done like in the early park design phase but they had no way of knowing that we would eventually select a lighted art piece right? but that's they've done their interfacing with the community um i would I mean, I don't even know if we have to spell it out that specifically. But okay. I would just make the motion that, you know, these lights stay up to 11, and there is the option for artists to change them if we need to for any reason. That, that, we, that we, yeah. And I mean, what we want basically is the lights on, on as long as there's food, considerable foot traffic, right? Like people who would enjoy it, actually. And our guess is 11, but yeah. we, sure. we'll, we will see. Sounds good. Sure. Is that that mud clear? <laughs> Do you have anything to say, John? <laughs> I'm still waiting for a recommendation. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. Go ahead, Joseph. So, do you want to put that in new words? Okay. So, I make a motion to accept the revised um, artist proposal uh, of the new softly glowing butterfly wings to have them lighted until 11 p.m. each night. Which uh, the artist can change if necessary, and that the artists um, should pursue the stamped pavers with city staff um, that are about to be feasible. Is a motion on the table? Is there a second? I second. All in favor? All. Is there any so or like any clarifying questions and then call Any questions okay Comments. Call. Oh. all in favor okay. thanks uh, is that an abstain or a no no and no uh, you didn't call for all against that's what Oh, oh that's that thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Oppose. Oppose. One. Oppose one. 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 Yeah. No. Then, Marcus, you're all done? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. It's good. It's good that you took those photos. It's good. Okay. Good discussion, everybody. Yes. 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 To seven new business seven point one discussion on public art content within the economic development website. Okay, so new new topic. Um, so we um, since the economic development team has expanded, we've been updating our website uh, and created a social media account. Um, we want to get some feedback on what we have on here, see if you have any recommendations and things to add um, content. I will say in terms of like how some of the displays are set up, we're a little bit limited and how we can move things around. Like uh, I'm just looking at like the top of this, uh, I'm really difficult to change. Uh, I'm like same with how some of these are set up, but content wise, um, you know, feedback recommendations on things to add. Um, that's what we're talking about right now. So um, we have a few different pages set up about public art. So just when we go to the website, go to our public art um, thing, we give you know, an overview of art and mountain views and photos. Uh, we have about 50% for art program, um, art exhibits at 
the Center for Performing Arts, a um, little bit about calls for artists, um, and again, just more, more about the brief, brief um, overview of Visual Arts Committee and the so is it Does it mention the K-5 policy, or is that like too wonky for the general um, public? Just... We talk about the 2% for, yeah. yeah our We've program. not called it out by name. Yeah. I think the K five policy. It's not. Um, I guess we could we could refer to it as that. I think um, people might it might generally know it as the two percent for our program more. Yeah. Um, I'd like that change just because it can make things easier for people to research. If they're interested, go check out that policy. Maybe link to it. So can you? So what's the first thing that you see when you come to the page? You see nice, yes. nice, nice pictures and then a whole bunch of text. Mm -hmm. So just as a former manager, you know, you want something short and sweet that captures your mind rather than... Um, Do we want to hold comments, just, just you guys? A, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah, I can go through it quick if you want. But... I mean, just, just as a... Yeah. Style. Boom. I know this is very yeah, visual, it's, 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 and we all want to jump in. No, no, I mean, I'm just just on the on the on the mm -hmm. rather than just a whole bunch of text, which is yeah. important. You want to capture a person's mind, which yeah. you do with the pictures, which is great. But just the text. I agree. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> let's Kirsten yeah. finish, and then we we open up to public comment, okay. and then we jump in. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, so we have the public art strategy. So. Um, Big art, um, lots of text <laughs> um, about just what the committee has done um, to draft the strategy so far. Um, we have some, uh, you know, information about the draft vision statement. Draft strategy, just um, people can look at the. Uh, the That's when you're on strategy, right? Yeah. On the left. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, people can look at the September twenty three version. Um, and then we have the VAC email for feedback um, and information about when this is going to the city council. So the next one. And then we have the public art map. Uh, and so John, uh, he's presented on this before to the committee, but just um, our Google map um, of all, all mm -hmm. most, <laughs> I think, um, of the art in Mountain View. Um, so you can look at it from this point of view. You can also expand it. Um, it'll take you straight to the Google map. You can search by uh, different themes, locations. I looked up City Hall. Um, and it'll take you to you can pull up the art pieces. Um, so it's really easy to map. And uh, I will say um, the Google map is a temporary map. We are working on a GIS related map as well. Uh, and that is currently with information services to develop that map. So basically all the content you see on this map is individual pins based. We're using a better mapping tool, uh, but that's being developed by GIS. So once that is published, that will replace this link um, and it'll be formatted a little bit differently um, and more consistently. Google Maps can be very good, but it has its limitations as well. So. And it's tied to you, right? I remember that you said that, mm -hmm. like the creator of the map, mm -hmm. you know, right. is tied uh, right. to the person who created <laughs> right. it. So people are going to bug John in like three years, like, we need to update this map. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah. wonder it's wonderful to see that. Just really, really nice. Yeah. Really, really nice. And then um, the last section that we have on the public art page, it, it links directly to the board's commission committees section of the main website. Um, so this is the overview of the visual arts committee and it this links back to some of the information that we just showed. So it links back to the public art map and the strategy. That's basically what we had so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then it also has a link to um, our constant contact sign up um, for art information calls for artists. We did have, or we do have a drafted page too for calls for artists. Um, it's not published right now because we don't have any open calls, um, but we have that 
ready and available to update when we do mobile calls. Would that be, where would that be? So it would show up under. You'll see it there mm -hmm. as a tab, mm -hmm. and then the page itself will have more details. Mm -hmm. Similar to kind of what you see in the presentation when Public Works comes in and says, here's the project. So here's a rendering of what it's going to look like. This is the call. So it'll eventually push them to CAFE if they want to submit. But all of that will be visually rendered on a page. Um, we don't have the page up. There's no open call. So um, but that will be a, a tab there. So we'll... The purpose of actually having more content on the city website will also help drive uh, and help amplify the cafe system a little bit better. So um, it'll give more exposure that way. So um, we'll use that when we get to our next call for August. So like residents can come in and see exactly. what's coming, what's being called for. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's in the uh, previous. Part of the website, you called it the two percent per. Okay. So I just want to consistent. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I did want to show too. So, like I said, we have um, an economic development Instagram now. <laughs> 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 it's very uh, easy. And I know Jesse's looked at it, and we posted. So, um, our colleague Amanda has been really good about um, posting and. We started doing a public art spotlight, and so she's posted three so far of some public mm -hmm. art in the city. And um, so since this was created in January, so um, it's you know we're kind of evening out like, the types of posts we have for businesses and art, and um, so we have this uh, um, cast bronze horse. Uh, which I have never seen in person. Outside of City Hall. And then I did add on here, we don't manage the Center for Performing Arts, but they do have, um, they do have visual arts information about the lobby art on their website. Um, and we work with the artists that the committee recommend, or, approved to take to display at the Center of Performing Arts Lobby. Um, we get photos from them to post online. So right now, the Center for Performing Arts has Joy Brew Month. Um, they display in November to March. And then Renee Bott, who is currently displaying through April 22nd. So the next one is um, S. Newman. And um, so they'll be up um, pretty soon, too. So did you, did you say then there's a link from the, the visual arts web, web page to do those? Yeah, I didn't um, have a big piece of text. Is that we just, we added uh, it um, oh, I see. here within this um, the front main page. Um, so I did add a link there. And it uh, was got too. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And then I did include, um, I included some examples of um, other cities uh, who have public art programs. Um, I included links to their websites. Uh, I think in terms of the just the general content that we've included on our website, so you know, overview of public art policy programs, um, either maps or images of public art in the city, um, and then information about the committees or commissions that are um, that these cities have. Uh, that's the common denominators of what we have. Um, every city has a different kind of style of website. Um, and some cities, like, you know, Palo Alto has a pretty big program and have their own division and some more content to include. Um, but if you, hopefully, you had a chance to look at some of those and just see what we or what other cities are doing and um, if there was anything that you particularly enjoyed in um, any of the, the cities that. Have here or elsewhere too. Um, we should include content um, if it's relevant to. Questions before we open public comments and then discussion. Is this live? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, is there somewhere prominent on my website that will link to the next agenda with the all the different ways people can get public commentary? So it's like Zoom, phone number, physical location, and email address. Um, that's a good question. Sure you can. When you go to the Visual Arts Committee page, then there's information about when, where the meetings are, um, yeah, link to agenda. Um, we don't post a link to the current agenda, but when you go to Logistar, then you can search. Um, can you I already have this up. Can you submit <laughs> public commentary by email? I was a little confused by that, because I know you can to city council. Yeah, yeah, no, I thought you could do it for the VAC, but and when I read the top of our agenda, so I saw um, Zoom and phone number and physical location on them. So uh, there is an email for the VAC. It's VAC at mountainview.gov. That comes to staff. So if people wanted to submit a public comment in advance of agenda, we would see it and would be able to bring it. And we have done that couple occasions where someone has yeah, yeah. commented. Um, so that should be posted to the top of the agenda for each meeting. Um, that's yeah, we can uh, work on augmenting the... Because right now it says all the other options, but it doesn't mention that. Is the email on this page right now? It's the email right in the corner of the left hand. That says Economic Development Division. That's that doesn't really see. Um, well, we get we all for get the done. division that supports the committee. I know, but for the user, this might be. I want to be very clear. Email yeah, the VAC. Yeah, for the user, it's not clear, right? That it gets where they want it. Like, if you want to email the Visual Arts Committee, this is the email. Yes. Is VAC scroll down just a little bit. Um, is there like? Okay, there we go. There we go. It says by four. Yeah, that's what I saw. Language where it says. Um, 4 p.m. the day of the BAC meeting. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would like. Yeah. Okay. Well, one other thought I had was with, with this page, you want people to participate. So there are openings. If you want to apply for an opening, we have to. Yeah, it's actually right right under Tutu's uh, apply here. So like, ah, so when does that go okay. when there's no opening? So this is the this is the clerks. So we're so there's a little bit of a yeah territory okay of just nuance right yeah. so you're you're an advisory body to the council yeah. and so the clerk manages council and therefore you're appointed by council so when you apply to be on a committee it goes to the clerk's office they coordinate with the respective department whose domain it is that staffs at so we have some ability to augment this page, but really if changes are happening on this page, we actually have to work with the clerk's office because it's under the all the advisory bodies. So they all the committees follow this template. Okay. Um, so this is a page that's more reflective of your body. Um, whereas what Kirsten had shared with you uh, on the public art and that we have 100% ownership of, and that's why we're also trying to put more content there because if we have to turn on a dime, we can do that at a moment's notice. So we don't wanna be super duplicative, but we're trying to build this out a little bit more so it's more of a one-stop to, to a degree. Um, and you're mainly okay. hoping for feedback on this page, right? The yes, but I mean, if there. if there's other feedback, um, there's something you may suggest here that might be very helpful that all the committees should be doing. Mm -hmm. I will say the, the prior page, um, the one nice thing is the clerk setup. That's where if you want to be alerted to agenda items, you can actually sign up. And that sign up, so there's two different signups on the clerk's page. One is... When the VAC agenda is posted because we use a system, as soon as we hit publish, it pushes out to anyone that signed up. And it's at the very bottom. So email address submit. That means anytime we do anything in public posting, 
related to VAC, if you put your email in there, you're going to get it. Um, however, if you go up just a little bit, um, you know, we have sign up. Now, the sign up for the calls, that's coming to us. Yeah. And we're, because it's our division or department that pushes out the calls for artists. So we, <laughs> so we're kind of crossing domains a little bit, um, but we're trying to also move some of, some of this from the clerk onto a more holistic, here's where you can get 98% of your stuff. You have to go for the other stuff right here. Okay. Um, let's open up, let, let's open it up to the public and then we're going. Uh, any members of the public wishing to comment on this item, please raise your hand or hit star six. I am not seeing this raised. Uh, what's it done? So if we can leave this up. So is that open? Questions and comments. Input, that this is the all? new page. Yeah. I, I love three of the pictures. That second one's hard for me. Did that one right there. Uh, well, it's the uh, Google uh, parking lot. No, no. 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 This is the community so center. So small. I think yeah. we're thinking the size. size. It's the front facing the parking lot. Oh. oh. Big, big mirror on the front of the door. Okay. Uh, that, All right. Yeah. The community if it was, center. Actually, I think this picture is... A picture of this artwork would be fine, just zoomed in more. Because right now you can't it, tell that those little... You're zoomed in more. It looks like a map to me. Yeah. It, it is, it is an abstract. Because you see this art yeah. in the map cycle. It's an abstract map, but also if you look more closely, you can see there's little figures of people, of all the things you could do in the park. But there's people but, you know, just I mean, having it is, that It's big up there. If I look at on my computer, I yeah. mean, I'm just like... With my glasses. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking like if you if it's you do that. It's a beautiful like picture. I'm not sure. But I'm thinking. I mean, you always have to think in terms of size. Yeah. Or you can select a different artwork. Whatever. I think. Yeah, that, just, I mean, and also I think I I agree. Maybe this the just for that first page the the um, artwork could be sized differently. I think oh, the other oh. three that are chosen are really nice. This one just is disruptive. I think with the the, the in terms of how it you said more is united i would say more or like maybe this is like have every now and then to, to divide sections add it, add have more. another picture of because that's what we're about right yes and i feel like i don't want to limit them to one bar of pictures and we have very diverse art right, right? like have tried to show very different could this be like a rotating carousel? Is that's going to be a, a you... discovery for people. Potentially. Yeah, like, like if you sit long enough, you could be like, oh, wow, I just saw like 40 art pieces go by. Yeah, but yeah, so... yeah and you go back and then there might be some things. Also, CD yeah, pages. I'll say with yeah, some of the questions, um, yeah. I'm not sure all of the capacities that we have. We'll have to um, ask mm -hmm. our, our the communications team members who yeah. work on the website. But um, like any feedback that you have like that, then we'll ask and see if it it's almost like after the first sentence, almost a link to the map to be able to say, hey, this is where it all is at. We're a vibrant community. These are some, here's some more. Does anyone have like, in case we can't do a rotating carousel or a much more art, does anyone have like a favorite piece that you really want included? That's I, you can email me. Yeah. me Concept wise, you can change this every month. They can change. Right. It could be a, a wheel. Yeah. Well, we're not sure if it's technically possible, but that would be great if it would work out. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Carousel. Carousel. Whatever. Yeah, that's cool. That's what I mean. So I think the other, so clearly more visuals mm -hmm. on the page. Mm -hmm. Big takeaway. Um, maybe a question uh, for consideration is, you know, it's great to see the image, but maybe not doing it as carousel or if we're going to do it as carousel, being able to actually aim what the piece is so yeah, people yeah. find Absolutely. it yeah. or having it be referenced. So yeah. maybe instead of having it be a collage, it's <laughs> one image, yep. you know, and this is uh, Hallow Lilies yeah. the, the, by yeah. Joe Sam by in the corner or exactly. what, yeah. whatever, right? And then, you know, next paragraph break, there's another one. This is an art piece by so-and-so at XYZ. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we can 
do those kinds of things, but definitely here imagery is important um, in terms of augmenting the pages. So we can certainly look at how to better structure that. Yeah, it's just said the first page should grab your attention and then have can the text you, late, late, yeah. later because you're you're marketing you the text. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're marketing the marketing. Mm -hmm. You want to capture people, and then oh, I've captured. Then you, then you go into deep into detail, so you're able to yeah that separate the two. Like, Su yeah. Susie said too that the visual of the page should be like a part. Yeah. Like, like so, yeah. And then, could you? Is there? I'm not a computer person, but the first thing I do is I will go down to those. Because when I'm looking at art, I go down and if there's a hand, you like double click and it just gets really big. Uh -huh. So that's what mm -hmm. I did with that little piece. I was like, I want to see it. And, and so I would just naturally scroll down with my thing, double click to see. Oh, yeah, I know that's tiny, but it's kind of I want to see what goes on. Is there that possibility where you could just go and double click and it would enlarge it so, and give you information? Typically on the So I think it has to do more with the back end of mm -hmm. the framework we'll need to look into that um if it's a wordpress site you can do that mm -hmm. uh, we use granicus i'm not sure if that's functionality built in mm -hmm. but to that point um if we break it up as individual pictures mm -hmm. that's a different way of handling it so we can spend some time investigating that but yeah. definitely i'm leaving with word imagery mm -hmm. reference to imagery this location would be and right. I might even play around with that public art and make that more interesting but if you scroll down just where it says public art there uh, I don't know if that we do we have a, a broad template we're dealing with so yeah. our creativity is going to be a little diminished okay, it could be an image of a banner that we all paint together yes <laughs> Okay, sure. I am. I heard you guys talking about how to find the page. I'm still confused because I am the perfect person that knows very little, and I'm an artist and super visual. But to find this page was hard for me, and that's like, like from now, the city website. Did you start at, at um, mountainview.gov? Yes, and then I it I got to I wrote no I wrote Mountain View Visual Arts Committee. Oh, that's you just have a Google search. Yeah. For that. Okay. Because that's oh, what okay. I'm, if, yeah, yeah. if I if I wanted to see the Visual Arts Committee, I'd go, and then it like just showed that type. Yeah. But to get here, I wouldn't have. I would have never seen this if I wasn't in this meeting. It, I think it definitely needs to cross link right? when you're yeah. on the Visual Arts Committee website, because you came through the city website. It needs to link back to this public art site because nobody knows uh, you can, can, we can ask them and i mean we are nestled within economic development that might not make sense no, for i wouldn't have been. that's a fact that's how it is yeah. but that may we need to be aware that does not make sense for everybody yeah it's right? counterintuitive yes. people find us there yeah. Kirsten, you said in the beginning right about cannot move to the right of public art that menu you feel cannot be Actually, trying to get that changed because um, that, that to me yeah. it looks like an after we're an afterthought, right? Yeah. About should be last, not uh, yeah. art is last, but we're yeah. trying to get that changed. Okay, sounds good. Um, so yeah, that, that was just one of the things that I noticed. Oh, well, maybe that'll be a little bit of a push. <laughs> yeah, yeah. because it, it, it yeah. it's, it's a template, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The city purchase a template, so this is all I got when I plugged in Visual Arts Committee. And so I would have thought that's the whole shebang. Yeah. yeah. And then also, I think the social media mm -hmm. link, so social media needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so fine, fine because I, it's not on. on oh, yeah, like the Instagram that shows our. And I was wondering yeah. because all the menu items on the left are quite specific. We need to pack everything else that we want to do. Like if we talk about, I don't know, we don't have them, but. But in the future, like upcoming events or highlighting an artist we worked with or anything else we want to say on the site is probably going to happen on this first on this landing page. And right? we can add, probably. yeah, we can add more. Or we add more here. there. Yeah. 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 So we can add we could more, add more here. menu items. Um, so, so, so like we could, if, let's say when we come to install a new art piece, mm -hmm. we could highlight it here. 
Yeah. New start piece. Yeah. Because we could have a oh, new cool. a yeah. new section. Yeah, new, right? new new thing and then have a and new, I, new... I saw that when you go to business, is it downtown or business? There's also like um um to, to down, yeah. downtown. First. Downtown. Yeah. Um they have when you go on the left hand side, yeah, they have the digest. So you we could also make if we have news, could we have something like that in the future so, too? So one of the others, so just um, as Kirsten finishes up her note. So the if you look down a little bit farther on this page, we created buttons. Mm -hmm. So this is the other, these are kind of the other oh, ways yeah, of visually. So the reality is, is you can get to content by clicking on these buttons, but it's the same content on the left-hand navigation, right? So ongoing takes you to the same page on the left, on the up here, um, ongoing, right? right? So there's two ways to kind of navigate to it. That's so not these, nice. are <laughs> these are stylistic mm -hmm. kinds of things we can do. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, once again, there are there's cooked templates, so we can play around with this a little bit. Um, so hearing more ease of use navigation or flexibility for either new openings um, or spotlighting, uh, more imagery within maybe the pages. A, maybe a gallery uh, could be one of the side things underneath the Florence yeah. Committee Public Art Strategy. Yeah, room I, don't know if, I don't know if you think gallery is redundant to the art map. Um, Maybe it is. I don't know, but well, the uh, the art map has like one. It's, it's organized it's different. One picture yeah. of something. It's like you you zoom in on the location, and then you find out what art is at that location. So, but when doing the art map for every art piece, yeah. ten pictures were taken. Yeah, and only one's being displayed. Okay, so, so yeah, you can actually create a okay. to take all those pictures and yeah, create yeah. a repository. Yeah, a gallery would be nice. Um, and I don't know if. This is not like necessarily a suggestion, but just like a thing you could do instead of say, for instance, having an image of the sculpture and then underneath in text, um, the name of the artist, the location, et cetera. It could, you could just have that picture be like a clickable link just to the map entry with all that in. That's another option. I really like those easy accessible links because as we grow, right, if we have a signature event <laughs> or we have, an artist who did a lot of work mm -hmm. downtown or whatever we want to highlight, we would actually be able to add yeah, those things really later really on. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is uh, yeah. Yeah. especially as we add things can install, right, we can right, right. advertise newness and profile. <clears throat> Well, I just plugged in City of Mountain View Art, and it came up Visual Arts Committee, none of that. And then I plugged in City of Mountain View Public Art. I don't know if it's my computer or what. And this came up, but it says that the page is not found. So it, when I went through your steps, the page came up. So... Yeah, let's see what the URL is. Yeah, I think... Um... And I did it twice. I think since we've updated, there might have been some changes. And so, yeah, I just think if, we're, if you do those buzz, those keywords like visual arts, art, public art, well, public art, if, if you just put art in there, this page should come up a lot easier than, than having to dig through layers to get there. Make it accessible is... is yeah. And maybe if visual... you don't mind emailing me, like when it says it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. John, do you have it, or do you want me to do it? Copy. copy. You got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Is that something for? This is what happened when I put in City of Mountain View Public Art, and it looks like page the same headers. What's that? I just read page that. That's, that's page not found. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then when I put in just City of Mountain View Art, in all of the options, it wasn't even up there. The only options were Visual Art Community, City of Mountain View, but nothing even. Google search. Okay. Okay. So, in terms of um, information that we provide on here, but um, I think to some of the comments about like it being a lot of text, we can separate these, these out into sections and talk about policy, 2% for public art, 
uh, so visual art, descriptive there. text mm -hmm. that is a little bit redundant. Even. Yeah, yeah, I would cut. I would cut it up in smaller chunks, okay. give it a big title. This is yeah. we're talking about our mission now, or we're talking about whatever it is, but kind of, and maybe that gives us the opportunity to highlight another artist yeah. or piece. Yeah. yeah, I think that needs, and I think I expect this to grow still, right? Yeah, as yeah. we as we have yeah. more yeah. opportunities and. It's very nice work. I mean, it's really because really when you look at other cities, I I took some notes like what they have on like. Like what you did, but we don't have those programs. Yeah. Yes. Right. Something we could do for more so, variety, mm -hmm. which I kind of hesitate to suggest because it's more like regular recurring work for staff. But mm -hmm. instead of just linking to the rotating art exhibits, um, we could have like a tab that says like featured artist or something. And it has, since the artist has already submitted, their bio and everything, and their picture samples and all that. We could have our own little page about that artist who's currently at the Performing Arts Center, and then include the link. Yeah. yeah. So like in any way, it would have, have to be updated, but it would. I mean, it's a feature, right? Yeah. Fe having featured artists. Yeah. But they're giving us all this content, so yeah. we yeah. can use it on our website. And we, <laughs> we have from Cafe. We have. Yeah, and I mean, we, we, have, all the, we, we have get all images, we get images, we get resumes, we get all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and, and I also feel like we. Uh, good photos of the art and, and yeah, have a good caption mm -hmm. is important because we're all about highlighting the artists, right? And supporting them yeah. and celebrating them. If it if the picture is kind of an afterthought, I think mm -hmm. that's also a missed a missed opportunity. Yeah. yeah. More visuals, easier More visuals, good visuals, caption yeah. caption. Yeah. More cross um, cross referencing. More, a lot of more cross referencing yeah. the social media. Um, and yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Is that good? I think. Well, I don't know if this will be an ongoing thing or it'll be at more in one meeting. Or, but I, I think you should get uh, Don's Don's input on the photography. I think this is a great start, and I hope we can just bring it back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the public art map. That's so fun. Yeah, the map means that you know how long it takes to get that up. Years and years. This is a great yeah. step. I'm coming in at the right <laughs> time, right? We fought for this map for so long. I feel like, wow, you guys are productive. <laughs> it's like for it's, but it's very nice. Oh, yeah. We're happy with it. All right, really in the. Speaking of time, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, are we good? We, we don't need to make a motion or anything, right? No, we'll yeah, feedback. Feedback and then great to give an update. Show, guys. Cool. Let us know. Uh, maybe there's a way of keeping us updated when there's updates. Yeah. yeah. Which, as you can tell, we'll be happy to give feedback. <laughs> <laughs> us mute humans. Yeah. We get a voice in the room, right? Yeah. So then we still have three uh, seven point three presentation of as we create roundtable. I would suggest we maybe we still do it since our memory is more fresh yeah. now, but maybe we do it in a briefer yeah. format. Well, I was gonna give a quick update on the municipal liaison roundtable uh, kind of role. So we got. Went into this uh, memorandum of understanding with SV Creates last fall, um, and they reached out to um, John and I in March about um, assigning a municipal liaison to be like the main point of contact for SV Creates. Um, so I'm going to be the municipal liaison, <laughs> um, and. Um, though that means they'll just send me information on like grants that they have available, um, any programs that they have going on. Um, and then they also asked for three points of contact um, within the city leadership. Um, so we um, requested that it be Susie um, as the visual arts chair, um, the performing arts chair, John McAllister, and the center for performing arts director, Teresa Vaughn. Um, and so the four of us then, um, well, the three city leadership members, they'll get um, access to Content Magazine um, and to uh, this this, one? Yeah, weekly newsletters. If you're all familiar. Yeah. Um, and then um, SV Creates will hold this quarterly roundtable. 
um, where the four of us will be invited. If someone's not able to go, then we can check in with them. Um, and see if there's someone else who wants to fill in that role too. Is the round table and is it like something you do by Zoom or is it all in a physical location? Physical location. So if you want to give an overview of the round table. Yes. Can yeah. we pull up then? Yeah. yeah. Because they actually give also a good a good uh version of what FV creates is. So, so as Kirsten said, it's quarterly and the same people the same people are Invited mm -hmm. and and it was so the roundtable happened two weeks ago. The Google mm -hmm. visitor experience, and there were all cities that were already that are already had the same agreement that Mountain View has with SV previous. Four people were present. They have They're all them. MOUs. They have most cities, mm -hmm. but that that's in the slides as well. So this is uh, how SV creates. Um, um, so who they are and what they do. So basically they just want to support specifically South Bay art scene. And they're all members and the founder, they're been in this for a long time. Very, very active, inspiring people. And, and it's all arts, music, visual. It's, it's yes, all, everybody. yes, okay. yes. <clears throat> so this is, this is the group that does it all. Um, and this is really what they want. Create a network, that's why they're doing this round table. And advocacy will be will, will be talking as well and and um, share resources. That's what they did at the, at the round table actually. They had three three presentations that they gave to us and that made everybody left very inspired and, mm -hmm. and, and it was really good. Um, so they long, yeah. So yeah, so Exactly. They 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 are in in like two thirds of all cities in the South Bay and, and one third they're working. And then this is actually in this handout. That, um, what they're saying is that most that Silicon Valley for all its its financial wealth was actually very very. In number and also in how much money they have, very small organizations. Right. It's actually, and then the, the 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 philanthropic giving is very high in Silicon Valley, but I think ninety percent of the ninety percent of donations leave Silicon Valley. They're not mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley. So, and this is, I mean, they're growing, right? New arts organizations. But but um, yeah, they're not in in any relationship. Actually, mm -hmm. so, say, say that again. The growing, but the So the um, I think the comment was that. But there was a <clears throat> most of the donations that I think are arts related or just general like philanthropic work in the Bay Area. Um, leaves the Bay Area, so it goes it's like the next slide. It goes. It's like oh, a couple okay. slides down. Funding climate context. Mm -hmm. uh, in our value of abundant wells, ninety percent of philanthropic giving leaves the region. There we go. And they don't all philanthropic giving. But they not categorize like in terms of most of it goes towards like hunger or homelessness or arts or the category of like the type of on top topic. Right. They just say most Exactly. Of it. So they did a lot of research and really know the field, right? And and the other slide was about that the, the diversity we have, which they say creates creates a different and creates a different climate. And what really struck with me is like what they said is like if you're in the Chicago area, you count in your suburb you count yourself as part of the Chicago area art scene, but San Jose doesn't have that draw. That is not like spreading out into, into right. and, and therefore that's also why they want to do this. this. This is why it's important. And then, so the round tip was mainly about three examples. So they had all those people there um, to really show examples of what can we do and how they, they help it actually make those things happen. And the first one was a grassroots approach in Gilroy. Um, 
and uh, that's um, Dario Villa. He's a uh, ex Googler, and he is the driver in in uh, Gilroy to um, they really sat down and, and were like thinking like what can we do. <laughs> So it's a very powerful, yeah. driven person. So Gilroy now has a huge uh, Dia de los Muertos festival mm -hmm. that his group that his group started. That's the Ofrenda festival that you saw. A couple of pictures, and he gave a great a lot of great tips how to pull something like that off. He mm -hmm. he one of the big takeaways was that so he secured many sponsors. I uh, had about a hundred thousand dollar budget. Um, about 8,000 um, 8, attendees. And like in the small text, he says, like he was very proud of that. He said, we, we calculated and calculated again. And what we think is that per person who attends a, an event like this, businesses earn $40. $40 a person is there. Yeah, so a big impact on local businesses. Yeah. So that was something that he shared Wait. um you said arts and economic prosperity six so um, i just i think that was i think that's the newest one i didn't know it got published that's all because last i checked it was on five and six had been delayed because of COVID. i'm just noticing the the source material <laughs> so oh, okay. don't worry about okay. it yeah yeah um and then he talks a lot about all three. Yeah, that what he, what he does so well because he, he actually started a couple of uh, foundations and groups and a scholarship is um, cross sector collaboration and co co creation. Mm -hmm. He really tries to get everybody, and he very much makes a point like let two let people do what they do best. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do everything, um, uh, but collaborate with everybody mm -hmm. and make sure everybody does their piece. One um, thing they said was um, that most of the people on the board for this um, event, it's, it's a community initiative, but the board members that they brought together are all artists too. Um, and I think the line that he said was that like, um, you can tell when an event is created by artists versus for artists, by people who are not artists. <laughs> um, and, yeah. brought all these and, and one interesting thing in terms of events, what he said is that he that he tied it in with a bike ride, a family bike ride and a wellness fair. And he said that was a game changer in the sense of there's so many more sponsors he could track. So many more people. The, street? the wellness fair attracted a lot of sponsors and the bike ride, I, as, as I understood, a lot of people. A lot of people wanted to be in this morning bike, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how the downtown of Gilroy is set up, but based on the pictures that they showed, it looked like there were blocks that were closed. It's down. very similar so, to the view, actually. Have like a nice historic mm -hmm. downtown, and then be a little, you know, so, very similar. Similar, yeah. Yeah. And then, and what he means with. So, so he did a lot of other things, like um, so you see more pictures of that festival, the Ofrenda Festival. And he has also the Marigold Legacy Scholarship Fund. Uh, and he has a couple of round tables that he does. As, and he gives grants and a round table where he says, everybody in the city of Mount New has to do with arts, performing arts or anything meets, meets regularly on a round table. So that was his very grassroots effort of still life into Gilroy. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, they received some funding. I can't remember how much it was, but from, it was a grant that was through um, SV Creates. That there were um, there was a one of the presenters is with the Gilroy Community Foundation, I think. Yeah, the South Bay Community Foundation, and yeah, um, she was one of the grant reviewers. Um, yeah. when he applied. Um, but their proposal said that they were going to fund it whether or not they got the grant. Uh, I'm sure they were planning on getting different types of sponsorships. Um, he pulled out all the stuffs basically and mm -hmm. made it.
And then the second presentation, um, she's the CEO of As We Create. So Connie Martinez, who has a lot of ties with Mountain Hill, is the founder, but not the, no, I mean, not the, not the, not the CEO, but she is still very involved. And she started As We Create. And, and Alexandra talked about that historic, so there's a California Arts Council, which is based in Sacramento. And historically, the South Bay, Silicon Valley had little or no footprint there in any way, not, not being on the board and not being actually, they give out uh, yearly the artist fellowship program. Mm -hmm which they have worked, but a lot of artists. And it was, she said, like rarely anybody or nobody and in no relationship with the corporation, basically. And they were very proud to present. He was there actually, Roy. Um, uh, he, 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 he got a, yeah, she, he's the uh, founder of San Jose Taiko. And he's the first, pointy to this body, uh, California Artist Council from this area. He has not started or he's just got appointed. He's mm -hmm. still yet has to have a meeting, but already seems like this. So these are the 2023 uh, fellows where he's included actually. Uh, these are all from Silicon Valley. So, and, and as we create, wanted to show like this is what advocacy can do, mm -hmm. right? We were literally non-existent as such a big area in Sacramento, and now we are. And now we even have somebody in the, in the advisory body. So were they just favoring like Sacramento or Southern California or? I think it was mostly San Francisco and Los Angeles. So oh, yeah. Maybe sure. Sacramento, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is a. <laughs> State, that's why it's in Sacramento, right? Mm -hmm. Statewide. Yeah. yeah. And then the last presentation uh, was by the San Jose Director of Cultural Affairs. And they were just, uh, because as we create, came out of the San Jose art scene, and now they're spreading out. Now they're, 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 there's Santa Clara County communities, but they're kind of born out of the San Jose art scene. Mm -hmm. So she was just um, explaining all the ways how San Jose like arts, they have an art commission, an art committee, and they have the San Jose, City of San Jose Office of Culture Affairs, where she is the So they, they mainly give grants, they give 120 grants a year. Um, they run they they run all cultural institutions in San Jose. They support the art commission, but they also have their own programming. So that's what they were presenting. Uh, they did a lot of research. They say on on art on on art what art does, benefits on values on, on how how art. Uh, benefits, personal health, relationship, self-expression, sense of place. That they research on that. And then mainly their presentation was about a um, couple of um, events that they put in together, like the um, Make Music, San Jose, uh, and there's a dance, dance uh, event, and then which is running right now, right? What Christine up right now is the We Create 408. Um, is because April is art and culture, and art and culture months has been dedicated as art and culture month. So they gave us actually handouts how to encourage cities to declare layer arts, culture, and creativity. So, is so that's there, also part of the advocacy. This is a national. We did request um, 
we're talking with the clerk about getting it on the agenda for April 23rd. Great. A proclamation. And what San Jose is doing, because it's April, is a, a month-long creativity challenge where you can sign up and you receive prompts to do art. And then they feature it on, on their social media pages. And then, yeah, the dance festival that they're doing. So they're trying to branch out in all this different ways. That was the presentation. <laughs> uh, it was a great event to network with other people. I, I would think that our, whenever we get to a, the art strategy, we tie into this change that's occurring. I think you know. I mean, the way the way the way you pitch it, because it's actually a good good timing to kind of recognize things are moving from when it was first conceived. <clears throat> And, and, we, and we tie, we want to tie into that, that, that wave of change. I think I'd really that would be good. The public art strategy would just like give us the flexibility yeah, yeah, to yeah, jump yeah. on this bandwagon yeah. and any other bandwagon that comes along. It gives us the base, right? To do but but, we, can talk, we, but yeah. we can also change council, make them aware of these much wider changes that are occurring from the bottom. This is a, this is a shift. Uh, that's great, and, and we've got organizations championing everyone to tie into it. That's going to be part of it. It's just great. It was wonderful. So, for yeah. there other questions? If not, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll comment to do on this item. Yes, any questions? Anything? Not so, and let's open to public comments. Anybody online wishing to make a public comment on the presentation in this item? Please raise your hand now. I've not seen any hands raised. Let's move on to. Are we going to say any further discussion? Any, any? We don't have a quorum, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> Using the bathroom doesn't count. We still, we still have a quorum. <laughs> we just can't vote um, right now. So, we'll so, so, what's the next steps? You the the. They'll invite us again in three months. Yeah, there's one in June, um, and. I believe that we'll be talking about how, like, our policy. Um, so we'll be talking about what other cities are doing, um, what things they have in place. And uh, does, does this format work for you guys that we bring it back yeah. each time yeah. we yeah. meet? Okay. And, yeah. and I mean, it might, might be nice just to check in with us when you're going to go, if there's something that you want, or this is what we're going to present or something like that, just so we're, we're kind of tied in. You. But it's, this is wonderful. Really yeah. wonderful. I'm curious, are there other uh, arts nonprofits involved, or is it just SV Creates and cities? So the not, I mean, they they work with other arts organizations and have ties to them. I'm not, I don't know, I can't name any names right now. Okay, but <laughs> it, well, sure not, it's not like know. other, um, you know, galleries or nonprofits were like invited. It was it mostly like city? Um, Pointies or whatever you yeah, want to call it was them. mostly city representatives, um, people from their commissions. Okay. Um, I mean, they're the publishers of content, <laughs> right? They mm -hmm. are yeah. they are present in the city. Oh, yeah. And just making sure I know how the information is flowing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two yeah. cities <laughs> is the partnership, and, yeah. and they, can, they can be back and forth, but it's, we would have to contact each other. So. All right. Moving on. To committee staff comments, questions, committee reports. I just had a few um, quick updates. So, on the topic of SV Creates, they're hosting um, an online grant writing workshop on April 23rd. Um, and so, you can sign up on their website um, to participate in this. It's specifically for grants through the California Arts Council. Um, and that's what you mentioned there were these fellows that um, uh, they got these uh, awards through the California Arts Council. There, um, there's someone in Santa Clara County, right? Um, Art, um, who is now on the board of the council too. Um, so they're doing a grant workshop on April 24th. Um, there's another grant opportunity that's through the Valley Transportation Authority, so ETA. Um, called the Transit Oriented Communities Grant. Um, they have um, free application workshops coming up this month too. 
Um, and these grants are, um, they have one aspect of it is for placemaking arts and activation that's near um, BTA and Caltrain hubs. Um, so within the downtown area, um, over by the San Antonio station, all along the BTA line um, that's in Mountain View, um, you can apply for grants um, for arts placemaking place and activation. So I, I did actually share this with Anita Rosen um, uh, for Arts Mountain Group. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was about yeah, to yeah, ask yeah. that. Okay. And we are, as a body, not ready to do that. <laughs> Getting into grant writing and practice. Um, and then the last update I have is um, that uh, we're, we're still working on details, but at a meeting soon, we'll be bringing on an item for discussion. Uh, Call for artists to paint um, the round cement bollards that are on Castro yes. Street. Oh, um, so it would be a similar setup to like the utility box um, painting. Um, so still working on details for that. So wait, round, which round cement? The, the, the Spherical bit. ones? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was, when you said paint yeah. the round cement things, I was thinking of something else. That <laughs> I, the, uh, I was thinking that the San SFPUC. Water access mm -hmm. points. I was like, yeah, that's right. They're at that's the cement. entrance. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I know the streets about. are blocked off yeah. at each of the uh, each block. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Yeah, but yeah, at least that's great. I hope I'm there's I didn't resume the art boxes first before getting to that. Because we've been meaning to resume that for you. <laughs> uh, are, so the one very limited funding for the art box where the bollards is part of the head mall. Mm -hmm. so, so using that money. Follow, follow the money. Yeah. Follow the money. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. That makes Brilliant. Sense. Are we in any way involved in that? Well, I always like the artist. We're, it will be a call for yeah. us. It, it, it's coming to this body. We're not entirely <laughs> sure in the exact format, but um, it has already been clear it's going to be coming to use. Uh, well, they added gate here that mentioned like the black fences, the short fences. Mm -hmm. The bollards were in outside those gates. There's bollards outside the gates that are designed to uh, address vehicles on Evelyn and Villa. And then there's bollards inside to make sure the gate doesn't work. Those bollards are really designed to be able to do that and to the head ball. Um, as you've seen in other communities, what happens on closed streets when vehicles get in them, there's some really bad horror stories there. So those are safety features. Yeah. Um, the fence is predominantly there so pedestrians don't continue walking down the middle of the street right. through the intersection. They look nice. I like the little plants you've been hanging on them. They Our updates. Anybody else? Updates. Anything you guys want to share? You good? No. I don't usually go to some of the places. Don't right. worry. <laughs> this is unusual. It's been interesting. Okay, though. so Let's get their stuff going. Five. Right? That's what I feel. Yep. Thank you all.